delegates, please welcome Wendy Nichols and the Platform Party. Delegates, can you take your seats and then we can start this afternoon's um, session. We've obviously got a very important... Can I ask you to settle down and be quiet, if I dare say that? Which I dare. I might say something different if it carries on, but can you just settle down? Be quiet. That means stopping talking for now and listen to what we're going to do. I told you I was a can-be techie. <laughs> OK, so we'll, this afternoon we'll continue our debate on our international issues. I have some information for you. It is clear that information provided to delegates assisted in the voting on reference back this morning. To maximise information available to delegates for debates tomorrow, the CAC has made available the online form for reference back. The link can be found at, and I'll get this bit wrong, https slash labour.org.uk slash reference back form. Sorry. Thank you. Reference hyphen, just a second, just let me finish and then I'll take it because I'll get this. I do you, I, I really can't hear you. If, if it's a point of order, do you want to come up and make it so that at least I can then respond to you? Yes, Chair, can you just put that on the screen? So, because I'm dyslexic, I will not understand what you're saying. So it's just on the screen, we so can, I can write it down. I think what we'll do is email it to delegates. I'm told that the system will allow us to put it on there, but we can get an email app sent to all delegates. Thank you. OK. So I don't really need to read it out then, do I? OK. So when you see the form, and if you want to make a reference back for tomorrow, please submit them before 9pm tonight. They will then be printed tomorrow in CAC Report 4. There is a 100-word limit has been set for the reasoning given in by the reference back. So if you can get any reference backs for tomorrow filled in on the form, sent back in for 9 o'clock, it will be printed so you'll have that information in front of you tomorrow. OK, is it a point of order? Hi, my name's Alex from uh, Streatham CLP. It's, it's, a, it's about accessibility as well. I understand tomorrow um, we're going to be discussing the motion on immigration and defending free movement uh, of, of, of free movement of people's rights. And I want to can we have confirmation today that it is going to be um, put on the table tomorrow so that we can prepare, and also to ask that in that discussion and debate that black and Asian and immigrant delegates are given priority to speak, because it is about racism that we're talking about. Thank you. Um, that wasn't really a point of order, but we can, can pass that information back to CAC um, about that for tomorrow's business. Thank you. Kia Starmer will be addressing conference a little later this afternoon. And we have lots of time for speeches from delegates. 
Our first speaker today is our Shadow Foreign Secretary, Emily Thornberry. Emily, please address Tom. Conference. It's great to be back here in Brighton. And to be frank, it's great to be here at all. <laughs> when I got knocked off my bike by a black cab in July, I was lying in a gutter near Westminster Central Hall after my head had crashed into the pavement and my life was flashing before my eyes. On which note, I'd say, incidentally, don't knock it till you tried it. There were a couple of moments from my youth that I'd forgotten about where I thought, ooh, <laughs> blimey, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't running through fields a week, comrades. <laughs> but of course, I then had the wonderful NHS paramedics coming to my aid. And they did the standard questions that they always do to test if you're suffering from a serious head injury. And dazed as I was, I got through it. What day is it? Friday. How many fingers am I holding up? Two. But when they got to who's the Prime Minister, I had to say, guys, I think you're going to have to take me to hospital because for some reason, I think it's Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> because conference, conference, you know, I've seen Boris Johnson up close. Not, not close up like a lot of other women, thank goodness. Um, but. But I shadowed him for the entire two years that he was Foreign Secretary, his only ministerial position before this one. And in my entire time in Parliament, I have never shadowed anyone so lazy, so incompetent, so deceitful and reckless, so utterly unsuited for the job of Prime Minister. And yet this is where we are. Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson in charge, attempting to drive our country off a cliff just as soon as he can work out which pedal is the accelerator. <laughs> but we will not let it happen. As Brighton's Peter Kyle has said we must fight with every fibre of our beings to say between now and the 31st of October and afterwards if there's a general election that any terms of departure from any government must go back to the people for a final say. There should be an option to remain and I for one will be out there campaigning to remain. Because, conference, we are an internationalist party. Our party, our unions and our members have always believed that we are not just stronger as part of an international movement, but we have a responsibility to lead that international movement. And indeed, it was Nelson Mandela who said on this very stage, on this very stage, 19 years ago this week, that Labour's historic mission as a party is to be the keepers of our brothers and sisters around the world. And I'm proud to stand here today speaking on behalf of my good friends Nia Griffiths and Dan Carden, on behalf of my wonderful Shadow Foreign, Foreign Office team, Liz McInnes, Helen Goodman, Fabian Hamilton, Ray Collins, Khaled Mahmood, and my wonderful campaigning PPS, Alex Sobel. All of us speaking, all of us speaking in support of Jeremy Corbyn, my friend, my neighbour, and our next Prime Minister. And I want to salute Nia and her team, her team of Wayne David, Gerald Jones and Dennis Tunnicliffe, for all the work that they have done to uphold the pledges to NATO, to fight for our steel industry and stop military outsourcing, to guarantee our armed forces get fair pay, decent housing, better support for their children and a proper say in how the forces are run, 
and to ensure that our veterans are not sleeping in the streets, but receive free education, new career opportunities and proper help with mental health issues. Because Boris Johnson can wrap himself in as many flags as he wants, but true patriotism is standing up for our soldiers and our veterans, and that is what Nia and her team do every day. Thank you. And I want to salute Dan Carden and his team as well, Preet Gill, Alex Norris, and the great multitasker that is Ray Collins. Uh, for continuing the work of our brilliant friend Kate Ossimore and standing up for the wonderful charities including the RNLI who understand that a life is a life whoever you are. And they dedicate themselves to helping the most vulnerable people abroad, even when the right-wing media criticise them for doing so. And under Dan's leadership, we will ensure that the overseas aid budget is used to support those charities to support the poorest people in the world, including, the, including through a new unit of public services within DFID, which will help developing countries stand on their own two feet strengthen their infrastructure, healthcare and education, and help governments in those countries give their citizens the public services they need. Because just as Labour will build a Britain that works for the many, not the few, we must do the same overseas. And as Dan has made clear, we will maintain our, speech, our pledges on spending, continue to pursue solidarity and global justice, and keep up our fight against global poverty inequality, and most importantly, climate change. Because when we think about Nelson Mandela's instruction to us to be the keepers of our brothers and sisters across the world, we need to imagine what that great old man would be saying to us today. The same thing a great young woman, Greta Thunberg, has been saying to the world for months which is, the first and foremost, that we must be the keepers of our planet. And we must dedicate ourselves not just to inspire a green industrial revolution in this country, but to work with every single country in the world to help them harvest the clean energy naturally available to them solar power, wind power, tidal power or hydropower and let every country become a world leader and a job creator in the technology that best suits them. Back in February I called this the globalisation of the Green New Deal so that not just Britain but every country can become a zero carbon economy and I believe it is our historic mission in this century to lead that effort and lead that fight before we reach the point of no return. And let's be clear, comrades, we desperately need that leadership in the world. That country by country, election by election, is being consumed by the resurgence of the so-called strongman politics. Putin killing with impunity from Syria to Salisbury, Maduro plunging Venezuela into ever deeper division and, and, and misery, Bolsonaro hailing Brazil's military junta as a, as a golden age, Duterte boasting boasting about killing Filipino street children, Netanyahu trying to turn Israel into an apartheid state. <laughs> Hermione jailing innocent women in Iran as diplomatic bargaining chips, Assad, Erdogan, Orban, Sisi, the list goes on and on. And wherever we see these strongman politicians, we see the same patterns coming up. A nationalism that trades in lies, hatred and fear. A nationalism not defined by love of their country and all of its people, but by the demonisation of outsiders and an attempt to divide their country's population into us and them. Where them can be anyone. Immigrants, minorities, the LGBT plus community, all the politicians and journalists who stand up for them. And it should shame us in this country 
that these issues are all too prevalent in our own Commonwealth of Nations. How can it be, how can it be that we have a Commonwealth member, India, revoking 70 years of constitutional protections for the Kashmiri people? How can it be that we have a Commonwealth member, Cameroon, slaughtering babies as part of their war on the Anglophone community? And how can it be, Conference, that we have a Commonwealth member, Brunei, passing laws to stone same-sex couples to death, and in none of these cases does the Commonwealth say a single word of collective criticism? The conference, is it any wonder that we are seeing this rise in strongman politics when the daddy of them all, their hero, their mentor, their friend, is sitting in the White House, the so-called leader of the free world, Donald Trump? <laughs> well, I ask you, conference, how can you lead a free world when you are locking toddlers in cages? How can you lead a free world when you are trying to take away the freedom of women to control their own bodies? How can you lead a free world when you are actively supporting the suppression and annexation of Palestine? Donald Trump is not the leader of the free world. He is the role model, the guiding light for all those strong man politicians across the world who are trying to tear freedom apart. And, and I'll tell you this, no one has taken more inspiration from him than the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. You know, I asked the question when he visited the UK last year, why on earth are they rolling out the red carpet for Bin Salman? Well, now we know why. It was the only way to cover up the blood that is dripping from his hands from the murder of Jamal Khashoggi and the slaughter of thousands of innocent civilians in Yemen. Next week, on the day Boris Johnson makes his conference speech, it will be exactly one year since Jamal Khashoggi was butchered inside the Saudi embassy in Istanbul. Twelve years on, and still and still, this Tory government will not say who it believes was responsible. Because, they say, the Saudi government is still investigating. But amid all the acres of news coverage that followed the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the most important sentence I read was from Dr. Meki Mada. She works in a health clinic in northern Yemen. She's been trying to help dozens of children starving and dying all around her every day. And she said this, we're surprised the Khashoggi case is getting so much attention while millions of Yemeni children are suffering and nobody gives a damn about them. And she said those words, sitting by the bed of a seven-year-old little girl called Amal Hussein. She was stroking her hair, I remember. And the images of that little girl's emaciated body shocked the world. And that little girl died a week later. And yes, we can cry tears for Amal, and all the other children who have died in Yemen and in Syria, in Cameroon and South Sudan, in Myanmar and in Gaza. But I tell you this, conference, I'm sick and tired of sorrow. I'm sick and tired of crying over what happens one month, only to see it even worse the next. Because those children need more than our sympathy and our tears. They need our action. They need our protection. And we cannot call ourselves the keepers of those children unless we are out there demanding it. 
The age of impunity needs to end. The age of strongman politics needs to end. And yes, there are signs of hope. Jacinda. Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand. Cyril Ramaphosa in South Africa. Anti Rinna in Finland, Abby Ahmed in Ethiopia, and a whole generation of progressive men and women who are shaking up American politics and putting the fear of God in Donald Trump. But we need to do more more to stop the hate-filled rhetoric that poisons our domestic and global politics, more to stop the reckless lurch towards military action as the only way to resolve international disputes, and more to stop the irresponsible sale of arms to countries who use them to kill civilians. And while Labour in government will take immediate steps on the sale of arms for use in Yemen and in Gaza, we will also do what I promised two years ago on this stage and what Brighton's Lloyd Russell Moyle has fought for so tirelessly <laughs> and conduct a root and branch reform of our arms export regime to ensure that never again, never again, can ministers turn a blind eye when British-made weapons are being used to kill innocent children. And we will never again put strategic alliances with monsters like Bin Salman before our responsibility to uphold human rights and protect the lives of our brothers and sisters across the world. The conference, we must also state as a fundamental principle that it is not just our role as a party to fight against injustices that we see today, but we must also correct the injustices of the past. And that is why we have committed to issue a formal apology for the first Amritsar massacre. And to hold a public review into Britain's role in the second Amritsar massacre. And that is why we have committed to allow the people of the Chagos Islands and their descendants the right of return from the lands from which they should never have been removed. And that is why we have committed to establish a judge-led inquiry into our country's alleged past complicity into rendition and torture and into the current operation of our secret courts. But when we are in government, I have agreed with Jeremy, John, Nia and Dan that we must also correct two other great injustices from our country's past. First, we will ensure that surviving black African, Asian and Caribbean soldiers who fought to free the world from fascism finally get the same deep mob payments that were given to their white counterparts. at the same rank and in the same regiments, and they put their lives on the line for our freedom. They watched their comrades die, but then they faced the insult, the indignity of being paid a different rate when they went home, simply because of the colour of their skin. In government, I am proud to announce that we will correct that injustice. And conference, there's another group of military veterans to whom we owe a huge debt. The men who, from the 1950s onwards, who were exposed to terrible levels of radiation when overseeing Britain's nuclear tests, and who have not just seen their own health damaged as a result, but most painfully, their children and their grandchildren too. Both the US and France have given large lump sum payments to some of their own nuclear test veterans to help them cope with their medical problems. But the next Labour government will go further than either of those countries. 
we will give a £50,000 lump sum payment to every surviving test veteran to help them and their families cope with their medical problems and give them the security and comfort they deserve in their old age. And let me thank the British Nuclear Test Veterans Association, the Mirror New newspaper and the journalist Susie Boniface in particular for fighting so hard and so long to win justice for those brave service people. That is campaigning journalist at its best. Thank you. Yes, 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 stand up. They're shy. <laughs> So in conclusion conference, if it is our mission to be the keepers of our brothers and sisters around the world, let me tell you what we must keep doing now. We must keep campaigning against climate change. And even when others are letting their forests burn, we must keep supporting all the brave men and women who fight for our country and the brave overseas aid workers who make our country so proud. And we must keep fighting to defeat the strongman politicians and hold them properly to account for their crimes. And we must keep standing up for every persecuted minority in our own country and around the world. We must keep working tirelessly for peace, even when others are chomping at the bit for war. And we must keep challenging the injustices of the present and correcting the injustices of the past. And with your endorsement today, conference, and with the instructions you, I hope you give us today, I believe that we must strive night and day, whatever it takes, to keep Britain in the European Union. But I believe, above all those things, conference, we must keep our eyes on the prize. We must keep our unity and our discipline. We must keep focused on getting Labour back into power. Because, because as Nelson Mandela told us on this stage, we are the keepers. And we must keep fighting until we win. Thank you. Thank you, um, Emily. Um, we now move on to our favourite part of the uh, conference this week, um, our reference back of the International Policy Commission annual report. You'll be pleased to know we've only had one CLP that's indicated in advance. <laughs> just, just hang on. You might have got part of it right. We have one reference back in advance from Brighton, Kemp Town. <laughs> Could the delegate make their way to the, to the um, delegation desk? Or oh, we're at the rostrum. If you haven't been there, if you call when you've finished. Is there anyone else who wants to move a reference back? there and one over there and that's I've got two people that's all I've seen that's all I'm going to take can I just remind you um, that um, this is your only option to move a reference back on the International Policy Commission report if you are moving a reference back you need to identify exactly which part 
of the document you are referring back. Can I remind you this is not about making a speech? And while you've all been at lunch, I found a button on here that actually turns that lectern off. <laughs> oh, no. I don't, I hopefully I don't have to use it, but I'm, I can, I am renowned for it in unison terms. So, um, so if you want to make your reference back, thank you very okay. much. Okay, thank you. Because it's back, I'm just going to give background, but not a speech. Um, I've worked in international development for the last 30 years, was lucky to work under a Labour government with Claire Short leading the world in a radical policy which was about international solidarity. And since then, we've seen the Tories make the aid agenda more about national interest. So huge amounts of money are being spent through the Ministry of Defence and through the Foreign Commonwealth Office um, for a lot of dodgy deals. And when I, I know for a start that Dan Carden and his colleagues are working on much more radical policy, some of which Emily spoke to, with a very strong emphasis on international solidarity. It is not just about aid and money, it is about solidarity with international workers, inter uh, and international labour movement, um, and I don't think that that's properly or adequately reflected in the current document. So if any of my professional friends pick this up, they'd think, oh my God. So please, I would like the conference or the Commission to consider um, adding something about international solidarity, the spirit um, of what we see international development and aid about, and also be clearer about whether DFID would be the only um, ministry um, or office taking or allocating aid or whether it would still be going through um, other departments and what means that, that it would be scrutinised and made coherent with our other more radical socialist policy agenda. Thank you. <laughs> Next reference back. Ibrahim Ali, Tottenham uh, CLP. I'd like to formally uh, reference back um, the second paragraph on page 124 on the section of ethical foreign policy and human rights. Um, what we should be actually demanding is an independent international inquiry to investigate abuses of the Indian Army uh, in Kashmir. And that should be something that uh, should be really referenced in the uh, MPF report rather than giving excuses why the Indian Army act the way they do in Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate. David Gannon, uh, Waverley CLP Armed Forces Veterans and Families Lead. I want to move a, I want to move a reference back to page 124, the section on ethical foreign policy, reference uh, Kashmir. Sorry, 124, yeah, Kashmir. Um, it's an occupied country. They're referring to the Kashmiris as committing terrorist acts. I mean, it's more like acts of resistance, in my personal opinion. I think there should be a reference back on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was um, three references back this afternoon, um, and the Brighton Kemp Towns reference back is summarised in CAC report number three. Okay, um, now are there any um, speakers for or against the reference backs? No? Okay, then we'll move on and we'll deal with those um, later this afternoon. So we now move to our composites um, and we start with composite 11 um, on Yemen. Moved by Birmingham Hall Green CLP, um, you have three minutes to move this and seconded by Sheffield, Brightside and Hillsborough CLP. Um, can I just warn all of you that are coming up today that it is three and two minutes and it is about respecting other people who want to speak. Um, and I will be telling all who go over, there'll be a little bit of latitude, but this morning there were a number of people that um, went over and I think for the fairness of conference, we tried, need to try to avoid doing that. Thank you. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. I thank Emily Thornbury for actually paving the way for this motion on Yemen. Yemen is the scene of the world's worst humanitarian disaster, and Britain is directly complicit. 
In four and a half years, US and UK backed Saudi co led coalition has launched more than 18,000 bombing raids on Yemen. According to Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, the UN, and the leading humanitarian NGOs, much of this bombing has been completely indiscriminate. Many instances may amount to war crimes. Since March 2015 to October 2018, more than 70,000 people have been killed or injured, and Saudi bombing is responsible for the majority of these. Millions of people have been displaced. The blockade imposed by the coalition is the primary cause of the world's worst humanitarian crisis, pushing millions to the brink of famine. The Saudi coalition has bombed hospitals and civilian infrastructure, including water treatment and sanitation facilities. A historic outbreak of cholera has affected well over a million Yemenis and killed over 2,500, 60% of those were children. Thousands of children have died from starvation and preventable disease. Saudi bombing is completely dependent on British and American support. The US and the UK supply bombs, the planes that drop the bombs, training for the pilots, and the spare parts and maintenance that keep those planes in the sky. The British and American governments claim that if they didn't supply these weapons to the Saudis, then others would provide them. That is a myth. These are complex weapon systems that can't quickly or be easily display replaced. The fact is that Washington and London could have stopped the Saudi bombing at any time if they'd wanted to. A UN report says that Britain, the US and France may be complicit in war crimes by arming and providing support to the Saudi-led coalition. The UN experts raise the real possibility that starvation, yes, starvation, is being employed as a war tactic. British complicity in that should be unthinkable. The Court of Appeal has ruled that licensing arms sales to Saudi Arabia is unlawful in the context of the Yemen war. Yet the Tory International Trade Secretary breached that court order by signing off yet more arms supplies. This is a disgrace, but she's still in post. Over the four years in this horrific war, conference, we must not turn our backs on Yemen, and therefore I ask you to support this motion. Thank you very much, I'm going to have Sheffield Brightside to second. From Belbin, Sheffield Brightside and Hillsborough. Conference, firstly I want to thank you for selecting this motion for discussion. We've seen over the last couple of weeks that the destruction of an oil facility in Saudi Arabia generates international headlines, while the ongoing atrocities and crimes against humanity that are affecting millions of innocent people in Yemen are largely ignored. I'd also like to thank members of the Yemeni community in Sheffield, many of whom have lost family members and friends in this conflict, for their support in getting this motion to the conference floor. The previous, speaker, the previous speaker has outlined the role of Saudi Arabia and of the UK in enabling and sustaining the slaughter in Yemen. It is absolutely clear that there is no military route to peace. Instead, the UK has to put its energies into ending the conflict and working constructively with all the participants in Yemen to build a lasting peace. Conference before the current war, there was a national dialogue in process that was inclusive, not only of all the political and religious groups, but also of social groups, including women, including young people, and including civil society organizations. Dialogue between all the parties to the Yemen conflict recognition of all the underlying political issues, including sudden separatism and federalism, is the only way to begin to chart a peaceful future for Yemen. This is recognised by the UN, whose special envoy Martin Griffiths is calling for all sides to come together for wide-ranging political talks. For too long, the UK has been part of the problem in Yemen. The Saudi-led escalation of the war has been a military, humanitarian and moral disaster 
and the current Tory government has shown that they are willing to break the law in order to perpetuate it and to maintain the relationships between the military establishment and the Saudis. The UK, under a Labour government, must be part of the solution. We must work for peace. That means an immediate end to arms sales to the Saudis and military support for them, and a diplomatic approach that brings all the participants and their international backers to the negotiating table. Conference, I urge you to support this motion and put the future of Yemen back into the hands of the Yemeni people. Okay, moving now on to Composite 12, um, Ethical Foreign Policy, moved by Hove, CLP, and seconded um, by uh, Birkenhead, CLP. to be ready um, to move the next two after this as well. Thank you. Hello, conference. Uh, I'm Ali Brownlee Bojang from Hove and Port Slade CLP. Just over 70 years ago, the Palestinian people were forcibly expelled from their homes and farms by the forces of the new Israeli state. They fled in a hurry, leaving everything behind because they believed they would soon return. They still have not. Palestinians call this the Nakba, catastrophe in English. Tension and conflict have ensued, and peace plans have come and gone. Meanwhile, the government of Israel continues to build illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank, sometimes bulldozing entire villages, fields of crops, 100-year-old olive groves to do so. Talk of a two-state solution has now become totally meaningless. Look at a current map of the West Bank and tell me how you would carve two states out of that. Netanyahu, <laughs> Netanyahu is now saying he will annex these settlements and the Jordan Valley. Just to be clear, it is a state forcibly taking control of territory outside its borders and integrating it unilaterally into its own jurisdiction. This is against international law. <laughs> President Trump's decision to move the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the contested and disputed capital, exacerbates the tensions even more. Yet despite the international community uniting in saying that this preemptive move is disastrous for any hopes of reviving meaningful talks, nothing happens. And I don't have, to, I don't have time to go into Trump's deal of the century, which is basically to buy the Palestinians out in exchange for them giving up their rights. Really? Despite numerous UN resolutions condemning the government of Israel for its human rights violations in the past, it has ignored them all and continues to act with impunity. Palestinian children, sometimes as young as 12, are imprisoned without trial for offences such as throwing stones at soldiers. Many of these young people are highly traumatised when they return to their families and need psych psychological care and support. While increasing its aid, particularly military aid, to the tune of $500 million to Israel, the US has stopped funding for Palestinian refugees, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. This is disastrous for the provision, upkeep, and rebuilding of schools and medical centers. The ongoing land, air, and sea blockade of Gaza continues. Nothing in, nothing out. This means that the 1.9 million Gaza Palestinians are confined in what has become described as the world's largest open-air prison. Delegate, can I ask you to wind up now? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. 
Those of us campaigning for justice and human rights for Palestinian people are often asked, why do we single out Palestine and Israel amongst all the other instances, instances of oppression? The answer is quite simple. A British government with a truly ethical... Sorry, Delegate, can I ask you to wind up okay. now? Thank Finally, you. Finally, conference. A Labour government should ensure that any solution includes Palestinians' right to self-determination and the right to return to their homes, protected by international law and expressed in count countless UN resolutions. Conference, as socialists we stand always with the oppressed. Conference, I move. Free Palestine! Just, just before you start, and, and I understand where we're all at, but if we do this after each um, composite, we'll end up having less time to debate. Um, there are some rules around. I'm not going to mention the rules because I'll get into trouble um, about balance, but if you want to just carry on, and just to remind you, it is two minutes. Thank you. Hello. My name is Chris Davis. I'm from Birkenhead CLP. Given that the situation in the occupied territories is a direct result of imperial misadventure by this country, we have a responsibility to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people as they struggle for their rights. In 2012, Noam Chomsky said Gaza is the world's biggest open-air prison. Most of the people in Gaza are refugees, and the story of Palestine is about a dispossessed people and who are refugees until this moment in Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and even sat in this audience here today. Comrades, whilst the Palestinian people are living in prison in Gaza and in exile as refugees, our conference has the luxury of developing, has the luxury of developing and improving services that we take for granted. But for those in the occupied Palestine who lack access to basic services, sufficient clean water, healthcare, education and employment, such discussions have no relation to their everyday reality. The Jeremy Corbyn-led government has, com has committed to implementing an ethical foreign policy in UK trade with Israel, and anything less would be a violation of human rights and against our Labour values. We must be clear that the promotion of any group's rights cannot be at the expense of others. The oppression of one nation is the oppression of every nation. In Pretoria in 1997, Nelson Mandela, a man who well understood oppression, said that we, all, we know all too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. <laughs> Conference Birkenhead CLP is proud to second this motion. Moving now on to Composite 13, um, Brexit moved by Tooting and seconded by the Labour Party Irish Society. And can the movers and seconders of Composite 14 please be ready? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Simon Hanna, Tooting Secretary, uh, first time delegate, first time speaker. Um, I joined Labour under Jeremy Corbyn, but I've been proud all my life to call myself a socialist and an internationalist. I'm also a Unison Branch Secretary and a Momentum member. Let me start by saying I am no fan of the EU. When Corbyn gave the EU 7 out of 10 back in 2016, I thought he was being generous. There are many criticisms to make of it from the neoliberal constitution to the undemocratic procedures to fortress Europe. But it's become clearer and clearer that nothing good will come of Brexit. It is a far-right project led by Nigel Farage, manipulated by Dominic Cummings and funded by disaster capitalists like Aaron Banks. It's part of the global move to the right. 
It's part of the global move to the right that Emily Thornberry described. Bolsonaro in Brazil, Orban in Hungary, and Trump, Mr Brexit himself in the United States. Our movement opposed Brexit in 2016, and now we need to continue that fight. But also we need to fight the causes of Brexit. Now, we know that some people voted to leave out of despair after Thatcher ripped out the heart of their communities. And let's be honest, Tony Blair didn't do enough to put them back together. They are still living with the legacy of neoliberalism and austerity. And these people need a transformative Labour government more than many others. The comrades are saying we will lose Leave voters if we get into an election with a Remain position in a second referendum. I say to those Leave voters that under a Jeremy Corbyn government, you will have an option to vote to leave under a better deal than May could ever have negotiated. If the confirmatory vote in a second referendum still backs a credible Leave deal, then we will respect that. But make no mistake, conference, the Labour movement is opposed to Brexit. Let's remember who the real enemy are. It isn't Brussels that closed the mines and destroyed those communities. Our hospitals aren't buckling under the stress of too many EU migrants. It's Tory cuts that have decimated health care. It isn't migrants driving down wages. It's the Tory anti-union laws that are strangling our movement and our ability to fight the bosses. And now the Tories tell us to trust them with Brexit, when a sociopathic liar like Boris Johnson promised £350 million a week for the NHS a few years ago, and now we're facing medicine shortages. Who can believe a word that man says? Is it any wonder, though, that one of the largest groups that have shifted their view from Leave to Remain are nurses? Conference, we are facing an election. The Tories want to drive us off a cliff edge. The Lib Dems are willing accomplices to Tory death merchants. All I can say to the Lib Dems is jog on. You ain't winning the next election. And even if you did... And even if you did, it would just be yellow Tories in charge of the country. Final sentence, Chair. Comrades, we cannot win an election by not taking sides. Leavers think we are Remainers, and Remainers think we don't know what we're talking about. What did Nye Bevan say about people who stand in the middle of the road? We need to say it now, loud and clear. We are a Remain party. Remain and transform. Comrades, the NEC statement proposes a special one-day conference in, in months' time. That's just kicking the can down the road again. More delay, more confusion. We need to campaign for Remain in an upcoming referendum. That is the path to victory, the path to getting Jeremy Corbyn into number 10, and Gallagher. the path to transformative Labour government. Thank you. No, sorry, can I just one second, just so that you know how consistent I am. I mentioned about the flags um, in the earlier conversation. I'm going to say the same about the placards just now. We need to move on with business and we need to be able to um, finish that today. Thank you. Thank you. Conference, I'm honoured to second this motion and to do so on behalf of the Labour Party Irish Society in solidarity with the people of Ireland. Northern Ireland is a place transformed from just one generation ago. Gone are the newspaper reports and TV bulletins of shootings, explosions and violence. The peace and prosperity Northern Ireland enjoys today was secured by the Good Friday Agreement. That was made possible because in those darkest of days, leaders from all communities found the courage and resolve to carry on, including Labour people like one of my heroes, Mo Molum. John Hume, in his Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech, said the EU was the inspiration for peace in Northern Ireland. The EU was, and is still, a project for peace, enabling people with differences to coexist. And shared British and Irish membership allowed communities in Northern Ireland to imagine a shared future. Crucial to this is an open, frictionless border, secured by the creation of the single market. This is not just about backups and backstops. Any form of Brexit risks the delicate peace and prosperity of Northern Ireland. The DUP and this Tory government are not standing up for the people there. If the Labour Party doesn't stand up for them today, no one else will.
Just as history will judge politicians and political movements from the time of the Good Friday Agreement, they will judge us today. It will ask, did we deliver on our moral duty to stand with the people of Northern Ireland against Brexit and in defence of the Good Friday Agreement? So, comrades, let us be clear and send an unambiguous message from this hall. No border, no Brexit. Only Composite 13 will protect the Good Friday Agreement and guarantee no border. So I urge you to support that on the behalf of the people of Ireland. Thank you. Can we now move on to Composite 14, moved by Liverpool Walton, CLP, and seconded by Abba Conway. We. My comrades, Alan Gibbons, Secretary of Liverpool, Walton CLP, uh, the safest seat in the United Kingdom. 85.7% Labour. Now, I'm proud to be at this conference. I'm absolutely made up. And last night, us and our friends from Composite 13, we had a good discussion, a comradely discussion, but we had points of disagreement. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And whoever wins this debate, we're all going to be on the knocker to get rid of Dominic Cummings and his Johnson. <laughs> now, in 2016, and I'm a socialist, I'm an internationalist, my roots are in County Wexford, Edingo Bra. I'll tell you at that time, I got me a bit of democracy and I voted Remain. That took five seconds. And then we have had three years, and the Tories dare to say Labour's been holding up the process. Who was in government? Who was a minister, Boris Johnson? You have failed! <laughs> the Labour Party, with the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn and Keir Starmer, they will go and negotiate a better deal. And then, after the next general election, we can put Remain, and I'll probably vote Remain, that's the most likely, all that deal, I'll make me mind up at that time, but we'll give the public a voice, a vote, democracy. Because... Whether you vote Leave or Remain, you need us to rebuild the health service. You need us to give back the schools and get rid of Ofsted. You need us to stand up for the migrants and the poor and the women who are abused. You need a Labour government. And when I go on picket lines, and this is what matters, we have got to talk not to just the 48% or the 52%, but the 99%. And when I am on the college picket line, when I am boycotting the sun, when we are feeding the homeless with the Scouse kitchen, when we are standing up for migrants, and when we are kicking the fascists out of Liverpool again and again and again. We need a transformative comrade, a transformative government under the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn. Arm him, support Composite 14 and reject 30. Okay, uh, 
time to ride the wave. Um, Sean Rickard, Aberconwy, CLP. Um, so I voted Remain, and I will vote Remain again. However, I have absolute respect for my comrades who feel differently on this. In my CLP, which is a Leave voting constituency, we've debated Brexit at length. <laughs> a good deal of members support Leave, and a good many support Remain. But we're a wonderful CLP. We are a wonderful CLP. We may disagree, but the respect that we in Abercombe have shown each other in this debate has made me proud. And um, when we, we came to a consensus and we submitted that consensus to conference and it's made its way into this composite. So um, Abercombe we CLP, proud of you. Um, this is not us versus them. This is not them versus us. We are not leavers and remainers. We are socialists. And as we have limited time, <laughs> as Len McCluskey said earlier, there's one door to number 10, and the only way we can go through it is together. Now, conference, conference. How much, how much would the papers love it if we weren't behind Jeremy Corbyn, if we, were, if we came out of this conference not united? Well, unlucky for them, because we are. We are behind Jeremy, and no matter where we stand on the EU, we are united in our fight to get Jeremy Corbyn into number 10 and to deliver a socialist government. Now, there are many people in this country who feel ignored. Labour is the only party that can represent us all. It is the only party. OK, and it's, it's definitely clear that conference we stand behind Jeremy Corbyn. But we need to stand behind him on this. Okay, we need to support him, we need to trust him and his team. Okay. Um, also, and this is an important point, and I don't want to be cut off before I make this point. We cannot, I appreciate, we cannot ignore the people of Northern Ireland. We must remember what is at stake for them. Okay, this is not a throwaway comment. Delegate, I've given you some Northern Ireland, though. It's I Northern know. Ireland, though. Well, I have, I right. have given you We've some We've got latitude. to put them at the forefront of the discussion. We've got to have, remember their voice, hear their voice throughout this. Okay, they cannot be ignored. Delegates. Uh, Brexit is tearing this country apart. Let's Delegates, be the ones that I put it back together. Thank Delegates. you very much. Thank you. Can we now move on to emergency motion on the human rights for Uyghurs, uh, moved by Finchley Green and Golders, sorry, Finchley and Golders Green CLP. Hi comrades, I'm Jo Gowers, the only delegate from Finchley and Golders Green, a first time delegate and our, and our diversity officer. Thank you for helping me have an amazing experience at my first conference. I'm so proud to be a member of the Labour Party and I'm so proud to have been an activist for the last six years. My party is a party, a community-based party. It takes on Labour policies to our friends, to our family, to our neighbours, to our community. We are a friendly constituency and we are proudly a diverse constituency where we speak more than 300 languages. We campaign on housing, on health, on people's happiness in their lives, against austerity. And we campaign on international human rights. We do not take sides between one people or another. We do not stand against oppression by encouraging prejudice against minority groups. But we do support peacemakers in every conflict, 
and never the war makers. We believe in solutions, not sides. In Kashmir, in Yemen, and for the Muslim Uyghurs in China. For over a year, members of our party have campaigned against uh, the in indefinite detention of between one and three million Muslim Uyghurs in Xinjiang province in China. Every week, members of our party have held a vigil outside the Chinese embassy in protest of the state oppression. The protest has grown and people have joined and helped raise awareness. We have taken notice and we want Boris Johnson to take notice because right now he is in New York at the UN and has he said anything to protect this oppressed group? No. The Tories won't defend human rights and it is essential that we tell the truth what China is doing right now. We must close the camps. We must, conference must call on China to close the camps, to return the Uyghur children to their families and to end the oppressive and intrusive and Islamophobic surveillance that suffocates, suffocates the lives of Uyghur people. For 13 years, we have supported people, and we will again. Thank you. Delegates, can I ask someone to formally second that from the floor? Yeah. yeah OK, thank you. Um, so we now move on to um, uh, speeches um, from delegates. Um, and I will um, remind you all um, that, that it is only two minutes that you're allowed to spon respond to. Can I just also gently say that when people are on the loop system for their hearing, when we, when we shout into the microphone, it really does impact on their hearing. I know how passionate it is, but if we want to speak a bit louder, can we just stand a little bit further back from the microphones? Okay. Um, we do have um, about two and a half hours to have this debate. <laughs> so I am going to try and get as many people as possible in. It is going to be difficult and I might at some point see whether I could put the lights up so I could see yeah. people at the back if that's yeah. possible. Um, around that. So let's give it a first attempt. I think I'm going to try and pick six people initially. Oh, a bit much for the desk. Okay, we'll go back to three then. <laughs> okay, so we'll start. I'm going to start and I'll move round. Okay, so um, I've got delegate there in the red tie um, and the woman. Um, there, and then I'm going to go further back, and um, let me come over here. The woman, is it? Just let me. These lights are terrible. There's somebody. Is there a? Someone who put the lights on. Yeah. Can can I just can, can could you just put the lights up a little bit for me? Sorry. If those two I've called already want to cut, to come up. Yeah. woman there at the back of this block here and I think it's is it the white in the white yeah and then I'll come round again I'll come round again Okay, um, if we want to start, then I'll come. If you put your hands down, we'll come round again after these. If I can remind you all of two minutes, we will get more people in. Can I start? Yep. Conference. 
Let us not for one moment underestimate the degree of unity we have in the Labour Party as we debate this difference. We are united in opposing Boris Johnson's No Deal Brexit. We are united in saying that any Brexit outcome must go back to the people because Brexit bears no resemblance to what Boris Johnson and his Leave campaign promised three years ago. Remember, they said it would be easy. It's turning out to have all kinds of complications they wouldn't tell us about. They said it would save lots of money that would all go to the NHS. It's costing a fortune. They said it would be good for the economy, that it would create jobs. The opposite is the case. So it's right to take it back to the people. And we have said that as a party faced with no deal or a Johnson-May style deal, we will campaign to remain. The only difference, the only nuance we are debating is what happens if we come to government before this is settled. Well, of course, we will try and negotiate a better deal, because if you're having a referendum, you've got to have the least damaging Brexit offer versus a Remain offer. The question is, should we say now already we, want, we will campaign to remain, or do we leave it ambiguous? Well, comrades, what's the argument for ambiguity? Some people say, oh, you need it to bargain better with the EU. No, in that negotiation, we would both have a common interest in lessening the damage to both sides compared to May's deal. You don't need to threaten. What would the threat be, actually? Give us what we want or, or we'll campaign to remain? That, it's not credible, is it? The other argument is electoral. Would it help us with Leave voters? Well, we tried ambiguity, comrades. We tried it in the May European elections. What happened? What happened was that we hemorrhaged votes to the Greens and the Liberal Democrats, far more than we did to the Brexit parties. It's an illusion to think that we could gain more from gaining back a sliver of the smaller and declining number of Labour Leave voters than we would lose at the same time from the larger number and growing number of Remain voters. So if we want Jeremy, if we want Jeremy in Downing Street, no ambiguity, campaign to remain. Thank you. Kath Pinder, speaking for GMB and as a proud campaigner for Labour. I'm from Batley and Spen in Yorkshire. Tragically, as you all know, our MP and my friend Joe Cox was taken from us. Joe said in her maiden speech, we are far more united and have far more in common with each other than the things that divide us. <laughs> Despite their warm words supporting Joe's vision, since the referendum, the Tories have deliberately tried to widen the divide. Theresa May shut out all the 48% who voted Remain as though they didn't matter. Now Boris Johnson wants to make out it's the public against Parliament when it comes to Brexit. Conference, he is playing with fire. But you know what? This could not be further from the truth. Labour will give the people the final say on any Brexit deal, unlike the Tories and the Lib Dems who won't. GMB supports the position of the Labour leadership. It means if you voted Remain in 2016, you will be able to get one more chance to vote to stay in the European Union and persuade all your friends that this is the best deal possible. And if you voted leave in 2016, you'll be able to look through the final terms of the de deal and decide if that is what you were promised and if that is what you still want. It's what we as trade unions do day in, day out. And with a Labour government, we will make sure that the negotiated deal is a better deal for workers than the Tories have so far or will ever achieve. It's in all our interests for that to be on the ballot paper. Finally, conference, 
let's not give the impression we are only speaking for half of the country at a time when we need to build Please bridges, not walls. Please support the NEC and the Composite 14. Okay, just before we take the next speaker, and I'm going to stand up to see if I can see any better, but there's that many hands. Um, I will take the next three speakers, and I'm going to have I'm going to have a look. I still can't see. Um, in the middle, you can. Oh, I can't see over there. There's, I, if I ask you to stand, that's not because you're standing. It's just so I can see. So can you um, in the red top? I'm not there yet. Do you want to come down? Not not that not that lady, the one at the back. Yes. It, it, I can't see whether it's pink or red. It's pink. Pink. Fuchsia. The one right at the back. Um, the um, person there. Yep. Yeah. And then the one behind you. And then I'll come back for some more. Okay. No, right at the there back. The back. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find people who had difficulty speaking at the back first, and then I'm coming forward. Start. Um, um, hi, my name is Dora and I'm the youth officer for Streatham CLP. Um, comrades, what we are seeing in Yemen is a humanitarian crisis, a humanitarian crisis of disastrous proportions. And when we're faced with this kind of situation, I think it's time to call a spade a spade. The crisis in Yemen is a crisis caused by capitalism. It is a crisis caused by the blindness of the profit motive that drives the capitalist system. Capitalism knows no morality. It knows no concern for human life or human dignity. And so in Yemen, we have thousands dying, thousands starving, thousands displaced and trapped in refugee camps, all so that a few capitalists can profit from arms sales. Since the start of the war, since the start of the war, the British state has licensed 4.7 billion worth of arms exports to Saudi Arabia, as well as providing training, maintenance and technical support to Saudi forces. The Tories refuse to accept their responsibility in facilitating this, and they are turning a blind eye to the murderous Saudi regime that they are aiding and abetting. They have allowed the capitalist class to profit from murder and starvation. And now Labour must do something about this. And we must rely on the strength of the organised working class to fight imperialism. <laughs> workers in France and Italy have already shown us the way. Dock workers in Marseille and in Genoa refuse to load arms onto a ship headed for Saudi Arabia. And this is an example that we must take to heart. But of course, we also have a glowing example of this kind of struggle in this country too, from the 1970s, when Rolls-Royce workers in Scotland refused to service planes that belonged to the murderous junta of Augusta Pinochet in Chile. And so with these examples in mind, comrades, yes, we should call on Parliament to halt the arms trade to Saudi Arabia. Yes, we should support an independent inquiry. But to fight imperialism, to truly defeat it, we must do so on a class basis, on the basis of socialist internationalism and working class solidarity. Can you please, can you wind up? Comrades, not a phone rings, not a wheel turns, not a light bulb shines without the kind permission of the working class. And once that enormous power is mobilised, there is nothing on earth that can stop it. Sophie Robbins, Twickenham CLP. First time delegate, first time speaker. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> um, comrades, I stand before you as a trans woman, a lesbian, and a Pisces. <laughs> I know, right? More importantly, 
I am a proud Labour member, disgusted by the damage, the human cost of the Tory Brexit and austerity inflicted on the working people of this country. LGD, LGB, why can't they have a better acronym than that? I always mix it up with BLT, honestly. Fine. L G B T Q plus. That's it. <laughs> we we've got far more to fear than most from a, to, a Boris's No Deal Brexit. Trans people alone, have, trans women and men, have seen an 81% rise in hate crime since the Brexit vote in 2016. Gay couples are frightened to hold hands in public, in Britain, in the 19th year of the 21st century. That is disgusting and it cannot stand. <laughs> now I'm aware that some people think that trans women don't actually exist, that we are raised women and lesbians. I think I exist. And I can barely erase my overdraft at the end of each month. <laughs> so what I would say is, anyone who thinks I'm a man, that's fine. That's OK. You can think what you like. I know what I am. Delegate, can I ask you to start okay. winding up? What I am is a woman fighting for all my sisters, cis and trans, fighting for all the lost, the frightened, the broken of Tory Britain, everyone who has been crushed under the well-polished brogues of Jacob Rees-Mogg and his gang of Tory rogues. Delegate, can you finish now, please? OK. Thank you. So, in conclusion, if you no, don't right agree now. with us, stand with us and fight to get a Labour government and Jeremy Corbyn elected as Prime Minister. Thank you. Delegate, just before you start, can I just remind everybody um, that the ballot for the disabled members' representative um, closes at 4 p.m. If anybody hasn't put that ballot paper in, they need to do that uh, within the next 20 minutes. Thank you. Sorry for that, Delegate. Thanks, Chair. Gordon Mackay, Unison. Conference, it's almost 100 years to the day that the owner of the Daily Mail, Lord Northcliffe, said that the way to win votes and sell newspapers is to hate. For some in the press and the Tory party, nothing's changed in those 100 years. The last nine years have seen attacks on the poor, the disabled, working people and immigrants. Every wage freeze, every slashed public service, every job loss, never down to the Tories. It's always someone else to blame. That country isn't our country. It's not the people in this hall's country. Unitional campaign, defend and vote for a country that puts people before profit, public services before greed, hope before hate. That's why Unison will be voting for Composite 13 today. And before, and before anyone tries to divide this party, let me be absolutely clear. Unison nominated Jeremy Corbyn for leader of this party in 2015, and when, other, when others argued, we kept him in the ballot paper and voted for him again in 2016. Unison's number one priority is a Labour government led by Jeremy Corbyn implementing socialist policies. Three, three years ago, three years ago, Unison, like every trade union in this hall, backed Remain because we believed leaving meant handing over the NHS for privatisation. When the American ambassador said the NHS would be on the table in a trade deal, it wasn't a slip of the tongue. Look at who the leading supporters of Leave are. Johnson, Gove, Raab, Farage, every one of them committed privateers. As we prepared to leave, what happened to the British economy? Retraction, slipping into recession and disinvestment. Do we really believe that it might get better if we leave? 
Brexit would see public revenue cut, jobs destroyed and public services underfunded. Brexit benefits the privatisers, the asset strippers, the haters. Everything that the Labour Party in unison were created Delegate. to oppose. Delegate. If we Can want a Labour up, government, please? we need to come to a view absolutely clear in the EU. We need to come to a view to lead. It's time to do the right thing, support a second referendum and campaign for Remain. Support Composite 13. My name is Yusuf Kandil. I am from North Ealing CLP. I am probably the first Palestinian to address this conference. I'm a proud, I'm a proud member of the Labour Party, and I'm a proud that I graduated from Brighton Polytechnic. So Brighton is my town. And coming back to Brighton after 36 years to be an active member of the Labour Party is something I can be proud of. I don't want to give a speech. Basically, what I'm saying to you, you probably know that Britain has a main role in creating my catastrophe. In 1948, my parents fled the village of Adawaime, in which 500 people were killed in one night in 29th of October 1948. And as a result, we became refugees. Now we are talking about Mr. Trump having his deal of the century. The deal of the century means neglecting that the refugees exist, i.e. he's saying that I do not exist. I urge you to support this motion, and I can ask you, there's no peace without justice, and there's no justice if the Palestinians don't have their rights. Thank you very much, Conference. Hello Conference, my name is Duncan Enright and I'm from Whitney Constituency and I must start with an apology. Had I beaten David Cameron in the 2015 general election, we wouldn't be talking about Brexit today. <laughs> A lot of people in our constituency voted to remain. We're a Remain constituency. People also voted Brexit, largely because they wanted to get, get rid of David Cameron and austerity and wanted to see a Labour government or an alternative to the austerity government which they were cursed with as a result of that 2015 general election. I'm like glad to say that in May this year, in Whitney in West Oxfordshire, Labour won across the board. We took control of the Town Council and I stand before you as the first Labour and Cooperative Mayor of Whitney in a generation. And I'm urging you to support Composite 13 and remain a Remain party. And here's why. Labour has been fighting in Europe for as long as we've all been around. Barbara Castle led MEPs in the European Parliament and turned it around and made it a, an engine for social justice. And it still remains that today. And we must be fighting the fascists and other right-wingers in the European Parliament. And this Labour Party has a proud history of doing just that. Finally, I want to share with you my experience also in May. Having got a great result at the start of May, I was one of the European candidates in the elections at the end of May in which we had a dreadful result, and that was partly because we had no clear position. Let's be clear today. Vote for Composite 13. Labour is a Remain party. Remain, revolt, reform. Thank you. Hello Conference, Lewis Nesbitt, Northern Ireland CLP, first time delegate, first time at conference. I want to speak to you today for everyone back home 
I was four years old when the Good Friday Agreement was signed. I've lived in a peace, a peace time that my parents and grandparents did not know, a peace that this party helped mediate, grow, and maintain, a peace that the EU helped to, building houses in Belfast and creating jobs in Derry, creating an open and frictionless border between North and South, and also creating a shared European identity to help bridge the divide in our communities. I came to conference this year as a member and a Coburn supporter who wants to be able to vote in this, for this Labour Party in elections in Northern Ireland. However, the Tories are now working to undermine the political situa situation back home. Their shifting Brexit position has caused instability in our economy, instalment, and now our peace process. The risks of our peace are happening right now. We all in this room have worries about our economy and the freedom of movement after Brexit. However, we as a CLP and as a, an island of Ireland have worries about our, our own lives too. The PSNI has reported that, uh, that there has been an increase in political mo politically motivated violence from dis dissident Republican groups due to the instability caused by the uncertainty around Brexit and what Brexit means for the border in Ireland. Labour was instrumental in forming peace in Ireland. However, we need you to continue your commitments to the Good Friday Agreement and ensure my friends, family and future generations can enjoy the peace I have. I ask you today, please think of Ireland, North and South, show solidarity with us in Ireland and support Compass at 13. Remain is the only option to continue this peace. Thank you. Rosie Rivers, I'm 17 years old and I feel like I might make a lot of enemies at the moment. I'm from Wilden CLP, however I'd like to reiterate that this speech does not speak on behalf of my CLP but rather on behalf of the young people in my area, East Grinstead, Crawley, Horsham, I hear you if no one else will. Um, I would like to talk against a second referendum as although I myself, you don't have to pity or applaud me, it's fine, I get it. Um, I would love a second referendum as much as most of you would, I imagine. However, I know thousands, or I don't know thousands, I don't know that many friends. I know hundreds of people aged 16 to 25 and younger in my area who think it will create a divide that will be worse for us to grow up in, even if it won't be for you. Oh, yeah, really shaky. So I won't want to urge you anything, you'll have your own opinions, but I would like to establish my reasons that I will not be voting for Composite 13 or 14. Thank you. Thank you, conference. Sophie Wilson, Sheffield Hallam CLP. I'm a bit poorly today, so I apologise about that. Comrades, I'm proud to be a delegate and I'm also proud to be a councillor back in Sheffield. I'd like to speak to you today about the community I represent. A proud northern ex-mining community of committed Labour voters and people who share our vision of a country that works for the many. Like so many of our heartlands are proud to vote for us election after election, they also voted overwhelmingly to leave the EU. But comrades, what my constituents need in this ex-mining village is not a no-deal Brexit, undemocratically forced through by an increasingly dictatorial government that serves the rich. Neither do they need empty promises and vicious austerity from the likes of Joe Swinson and a party of opportunistic hypocrites. <laughs> what my constituents desperately need and what will bring, bring real, long-term, lasting change to their lives is a socialist government led by Jeremy Corbyn. And Jeremy is no fool. 
He has known from the start that the only way we can seek to resolve Brexit in the interest of the 99% is to bring everyone back together, united under a common cause and against a common enemy. And that enemy is poverty and greed, and the class that perpetuates and, prom and profits from both. Conference, despite what the media say, this, this Brexit policy could not be more simple nor more democratic. We cannot disregard the 2016 referendum or attempt to leave behind our heartlands in the same way the Tories have done. However, nobody voted for No Deal and nobody voted for Boris Johnson. And right now, we need to negotiate the best deal that we can with the EU, call a special conference so ordinary Labour members like ourselves can make sure we agree with it and then put it back to the people. I urge delegates to support Composite 14 for the good of the people and to unite our electorate. And to show, ensure we're on good footing to win a general election and deliver the radical Labour policies that I and my communities so desperately need. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to do the next round, and I'm going to do this something different, which is against what we've, we've said, but it's my choice to ask people who want to speak to stand up, not your choice to, to do that. It might make it easier for me to be able to see um, where people are so all of you who would like to speak, don't everybody stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do that. Right. OK. There's a, a woman there in, is it a black with flowery top on? Yeah. Delegate. 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 OK. Because, because we've got our accessibility accessibility stewards that are in turquoise tops so I can actually see them as well. Um, the woman there in the blue and the guy here at the front and then can the young guy that can um, and then can everybody sit down so I can make sure I see people although I had seen someone over there with an accessibility no. Yes. The move. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I will take. I'm in there and I'm in. We've got three, and I will come back. Okay. Uh, Sandy Kennedy, Brighton Pavilion an old new delegate, or new old, I'm not sure which. The important word here, speaking for Palestine, is love, and what that means in terms of responsibilities and obligations. An Israeli woman described it this way. She, who is working in Palestine for human rights and against the occupation, said, I am Jewish, I am Israeli, I love my country. But the world should know what Israel is doing now is wrong. That is an ethical voice, and that ethical woman deserves our ethical motion, just as the Palestinians deserve this ethical motion, just as we, as the Labour Party, and we, as citizens of this country, deserve such an ethical motion, and that conference is why I commend it to you. Thank you. Kate Hudson, CW, speaking in support of the NEC statement, our leader's position. Brexit has never been an easy issue for any of us. The referendum was hugely divisive, has opened the door to a toxic populism on the right, and most frustratingly, when 40 million people are trapped in poverty, when food banks are a fixture of our communities, it has drowned out many of the debates we should be having on this stage today.
Labour has got to unite the country. And I honestly believe this is the policy that allows us to do that. And it reflects what our CWU members agreed at our conference in April. While the CWU campaigned for Remain, earlier this year we debated Brexit with 1,000 of our CWU representatives based in workplaces across the UK in a hall, just like this one, just like we're doing today. And conference, I can't leave Rhys Rostrum without making this point. When we come together and we debate, whatever the issue, there are no enemies in this room. Our enemies are in Garden Street and number 10. voted to oppose a no-deal Brexit, to respect the results of the referendum and for our union to hold a special conference to agree our position if there is a public vote. Conference, as a proud trade unionist, as someone who has negotiated with employers day in and day out for all of my working life, I know it's not credible to be saying we will negotiate a deal that we already re oppose, as set out in Composite 13. <laughs> Our members would see this in an instant, and we believe the public will as well. The Delica, CW, can I ask you to wind up, please? The CW back Corbyn from the start, and we believe this is the right thing to do. We need to unite, we, get, we need to get behind this statement, we need to move forward, and we need to get Boris out of number 10. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Jill Murdoch, Transport Salaried Staffs Association. This isn't a prepared speech. My General Secretary was, going, was hoping to speak, but he's dealing with the loss of hundreds of our members' jobs at Thomas Cook at the moment. Um, TSSA unequivocally supports Composite 13. But, but whichever, whichever we pass, we have a good solid plan for how to deal with the situation that we're facing. I would like to see, however, an end to ambiguity, if only for the situation of Northern Ireland. Most of my life, the troubles, as they were euphemistically called in Northern Ireland, weighed heavily on all of us. I visited Northern Ireland during the troubles, and I have a horror of anyone having to return to those days. We have to defend, we have to defend the Good Friday Agreement if it's the last thing we do. Membership of the EU is a defence of the Good Friday Agreement. Even the seconder of, of Composite 14 said that the situation in Northern Ireland is crucial, but he had no solution to offer. Only Composite 13 offers that solution, so please support it. Thank you, Conference. Conference, Howard Beckett unites, speaking in support of the NEC statement, in support of Composite 14. And Conference, as a proud Northern Irishman who grew up during the Troubles and experienced the Troubles, asking you to oppose Composite 13. Conference, Tories thrive on division. It is in their very DNA. They breed racism, Islamophobia, xenophobia. They create hostile environments. Conference, be in no doubt, Brexit is the latest Tory vessel for division. Johnson and Cummings seek to divide our class over leave or remain, knowing it is the only chance for them to retain power. Conference, Jeremy Corbyn seeks to say honestly that the 2016 referendum has a democratic legitimacy. <laughs> but conference, we are three years on, and when a Labour deal is agreed, 
It is legitimate to ask if people want that deal or want Remain. And it is legitimate to say, in knowing the content of that deal, only then will we, the members, decide if we want to back the deal or back Remain at a democratic conference. The conference, as you've heard, Composites 13 seeks to define us now as a party of Remain and say that any negotiated deal, no matter what is in it, should be rejected in favour of Remain. And conference, I have to say, as anyone who watched Emily on Question Time will know, it would be a car crash to send Jeremy Corbyn into a general election saying that he can negotiate a credible deal when our position is one to reject that deal. <laughs> and conference, Composite 13 is precisely what Tories want. It is a guarantee that the next election is about Brexit and Brexit only. All of our transformative agenda drowned out by Brexit. Jeremy Corbyn is saying to us, do not tie my hands. Allow me to talk of unity because I am a man of unity. Allow me the chance, I will, Chair. Allow me the chance, the only chance of having an election where I can talk not for 48%, not for 52%, but for 99% against the 1%. And conference, that is because Jeremy Corbyn is the man that Len McCluskey described. He refuses to be defined by Brexit because he's a socialist and a trade unionist like all of us. And conference, I will, I will finish, Chair, by saying this. I will finish by saying this. I will make a plea to my comrades in the CLPs, and you are my comrades. I would make Howard, a plea. Howard, do not I have asked Tory you on four occasions to, to wind up. Our leader. a little bit of respect that when I ask people to stop speaking, it isn't because I, nobody likes to hear what you're saying, it's so that everybody else following you gets the opportunity to be able to speak. We could have had another, two, another person in there, so can we just be a bit more respectful of each other? Thank you. And that's not acceptable either. I'm making a point. I have to make the point because it's about being fair to everybody in this hall. Can you all sit down before I get myself into even more bother? Um, but I, no doubt you know I can deal with that. Um, sit down until I ask you to stand because it's um, the appropriate thing um, to do. So I'm going to stand up at the same time as you do and try and pick some more speakers. We do still have an hour um, to deal with this. Okay. Right. Here we go. Okay. Let's have a look. There is... Um, Someone right at the back there, yep. The um, guy with the white baseball cap on, and I need a woman. And I need a woman. Someone with the red jacket. And the um, the uh, person there with the accessibility steward with them, and then I'll come back round again if we all sit down. Glasgow Southside CLP, first time speaker. I'm 
here asking Conference to support Composite 13. Bre Brexit is the biggest crisis this country has faced in my lifetime, and frankly, it terrifies me. The Tories created this disaster that risks jobs, the loss of workers' rights, and a further decimation in the standard of living of the most vulnerable in society. Nobody voted to make themselves poorer. Nobody voted to lose their jobs. Nobody voted to ruin the chances of the next generation. This is the greatest challenge facing our country, and we absolutely cannot sit on the fence. We are the Labour Party, and we have a responsibility to fight for the communities we represent, to fight against austerity, and to remain in the EU. To do that, we need a Labour government with a clear Brexit position, and this motion does that. It is our duty to fight to remain in both the UK and the EU. We must build bridges, not barriers. That is why we believe in solidarity, and we are outward-looking internationalists, not inward-looking nationalists. If the Labour Party, the Labour Party, won't fight for jobs, won't fight for the poorest, the most vulnerable, and won't fight for solidarity and unity, then no one will. We need a general election. We need a Labour government. We need an end to this Brexit chaos. We need a people's vote in which we campaign actively to remain. Conference, I ask you to support this composite. Abdullah Okud, Youth Delegate, Sheffield, Brightside and Hillsborough, first time delegate, first time speaker. <laughs> Conference, the Labour, the Labour Party is a party of international solidarity and world peace. A party which believes that every child on this planet deserves to live in a world free from the horrors of man-made war and destruction. Over the last five years, the UN has estimated over 100,000 Yemeni children have been killed by one of the most brutal bombing campaigns in the century. Such brutality has caused one of the, main, one of the largest man-made famines, starving millions of innocent Yemenis for over half a decade. Conference, this is a disgrace. I repeat, conference, this is a disgrace. And as if that wasn't enough, and as if that wasn't enough, we have to understand that enough is enough. We have to understand that the people of Yemen are just all innocent civilians trapped in conflict across the world. They are just like us. They cry like us. They dream our dreams, and we dream their dreams. Conference, as obscure it may, it may seem, we have more in common with the Yemeni people, the innocent Yemeni people, than the political leaders who sell weapons which are used to violate international law. This motion demands that a labour movement must commit to end all sales Delegate, to all human rights to violators. Up, please? Can I ask you to wind up? Yeah. Thank you. Since I don't have time, yeah. I will mention this very quickly. Very, very quickly. This motion also <laughs> sorry. Um, that we have to consider the people uh, in South Yemen and North Yemen as well. And I will finish with this quote, really important quote, please. In the words of Malcolm X, we declare our right on this earth to be human beings, to be respected human beings, to be given the rights of a human being in this society. On this earth, on this day, we intend to bring existence by any means necessary. Please support this motion conference. Thank you very much. Power to the people. Hi, uh, 
I'm Juan Baeza, uh, Pavilion Brighton uh, CLP, otherwise known as the Reference in Back CLP. Um, I'm loving this conference. It's fantastic. We've heard of an array of announcements on fantastic policies around the NHS, employment, education, poverty, foreign policy. These will form the basis of a fantastic socialist manifesto that we'll put to the people. Okay? And that will transform our society. But all of that will be lost, and it will mean nothing if we don't unite around our leader. We united to get Jeremy Corbyn and the other socialists elected. We then united again to keep him there. And now we need to unite again so that we keep him there and we support the leader. We cannot give our detractors any more ammunition. They will make it up anyway. So we've got to stand firm. I'm Chilean, and when Salvador Allende was elected, the anthem that we used was El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido. For those of you who don't know Spanish, that's the people united will never be defeated. So, comrades, unite around our leadership, reject Composite 13, support the NEC position and Composite 14. Come on! Testing. Can everyone hear me? Fantastic. Uh, Mark Inch, Portsmouth CLP, Portsmouth South CLP. Uh, I just want to start off by saying I had to take someone to hospital yesterday uh, because they passed out. <laughs> and um, the level of unity and the level of cohesion between those NHS workers, despite the fact that they had to deal with the entire hospital corridor of patients, put to shame how the Labour Party conference has dealt with issues over the last two days, right? We have not shut, we, we're improving, we're significantly improving, guys, and I'm so proud, right? But we need to stand up for those NHS workers, right? I know it sounds confusing, I'm getting to the point, sorry. The biggest division between our Labour Party right now is between people who outright want to remain in the European Union and people who also want to be rain, remain in the European Union, but want to allow those people who want to leave to speak and have a voice, right? What a tiny problem to face. What a tiny problem to face compared with the, the, the work that the NHS staff members have to do. It was a wake-up call to go there. The mainstream media will in any case, right, try to make us look more incompetent than the Tories. The only way that the Labour Party is going to sell ourselves to the electorate is not by shoving individual opinions down people's throats. We can campaign for Remain. I voted Remain. I want to stay in the European Union. But we cannot tell Brexit voters that they are stupid and that they are racist. And in the event of a second vote, we must allow a credible leave option to be campaigned for and put on the table because, in my opinion, people are likely to be educated that the Brexit process will not end on October the 31st and it will go on four years. However, if they want to vote that way, that's fine. But I believe personally that if we educate people on the subject, that they will vote the same way that I want to and stay in the European Union a second vote. Can you vote. start to wind up, please? By all means. I understand that the people of Scotland and Northern Ireland will feel incredibly strongly on this issue. I understand that minority communities will obviously feel very strongly on Brexit as well. However, right, a soft Brexit won't kill off the NHS. A Tory government or a Lib Dem government or a Tory Lib Dem coalition will kill off the NHS. And I'm saying that as an NHS worker, ladies and gentlemen.
Gallagher, can I ask you to finish now, please? Composite 14, guys. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you. Uh, comrades, Jean Roberts, Brent Central. However you voted in the referendum, there is no debate that Leave won, whether you like it or not. And I voted Leave. A few reasons. The EU is not a model democracy and freedom and has freedoms. Its policies are decided by the lobbies of multinational companies. It was our trade unions that won the rights we have through our collective strength, not the EU. However, we are where we are. We have to get rid of this right-wing, anti-working class government made up of elites. To do this, we must unite, not divide the Labour Party, divide the country. We have to recognise that over half the people voted to leave. We need to bring as many of those as possible to understand what a Labour Party, a Labour government, would bring to our country, a government that believes in social justice, that would close the poverty gap, that would support those who need support in whatever way, that would welcome all those who want to build a socialist country here from wherever they come from. Let's first go to the general election, put forward transformational policies suggested here over the last few days. We have the opportunity, comrades, to either cause more division or unite and make the election of a socialist government possible. I urge you to vote against Composite Motion 13 and vote for Composite 14. Before the next delegate, I'm going to do another um, round. I'm going to again ask people to stand up and I'll do um, the same. I'm going to try and take. There's a young woman at the front there. Sorry. Um, I think I'm just trying. In the red, that, yep, yep. And. Um, I'm going to try and find someone from over there on that back wall. Is it a blue shirt with stripes on it? Right at the back, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, where the Labour 19 hashtag is, there's somebody stood in a white shirt and I don't think it's got stripes on it. Yes, you that's just turned round there, yes, yes, yes. Okay, and we'll look. Oh, uh, no, that's right. Okay, won't well, be a second. I will need a woman, don't I? Need a woman. The woman in the white T-shirt there. Then we'll come round again. We've still got another 40 minutes. Hello everyone, <laughs> my name is Shelley Ryan, I'm first time delegate and first time speaker. Okay, I hadn't planned to speak today but I've been urged to do so and I'm going to read you something I wrote this morning in the car. I wasn't driving when I wrote it, just to reassure you, that's not why I'm sitting in with my leg in a car. Okay, our current position to negotiate a Labour, is to ne negotiate a Labour Brexit deal if we win a general election and then put that deal back to the public in a referendum against Remain. Despite my antipathy toward a further referendum, I can live with this position. A lot of Leave voting members can live with it, albeit with a fair level of disappointment. 
and naturally Remain supporting members can live with it because it offers them a good shot at reversing Brexit. And that's why I believe we should stop here and not move any further toward a Remain position. The position that Composite 13 would put us in would be to campaign for Remain against the Labour negotiated deal and to tie our hands now. And that position has been roundly mocked, and understandably so, because it casts doubt that we will negotiate any future deal in good faith. And Jeremy Corbyn has put it on record that he would prefer to stay neutral in the position of us campaigning against campaigning in a future referendum, which I agree with. The fact is, this is the only position that can hold the disparate Brexit factions in our own party together, and that's a sign of what it can achieve in a general election. Whether voters voted leave or remain, they can just about live with our offer on Brexit. Add to that a list of exciting, life-transforming policies, and we can bring our broken country back together. Can I ask you to wind up, please? Thank you. I'm really sorry. Can I ask you to wind up, please? Thank you. So basically, please support Composite Motion 14 and reject Composite Motion 13. And support Jeremy Corbyn. Zoe Goodman, CLP Delegate, Bristol South. <laughs> I'm also Unite Community Women's Officer for Bristol, Bath and Gloucester Branch, and I'd like to thank Unite for setting up Unite Community. I'm speaking against Composite 13 on Brexit and for Composite 14. <laughs> and I'm in support of the NEC statement on Brexit. Comrades, our country is divided on Brexit and we as a Labour Party need to work together to help unite the country. The position put forward by Jeremy Corbyn and endorsed by the NEC allows us to do this. To work as a Labour government to secure a sensible leave deal and put it before the people in a referendum alongside the option to remain. Allow members to decide for themselves how to campaign in the referendum and let people decide between leave and remain. I live in Bristol, which is not the remain city that some claim. Bristol South was split 52% remain and 48% leave, the opposite of the national result, but still marginal. I would like to go out to campaign in the forthcoming general election for Labour policies and listen to people's views on the doorstep about Brexit, not push a particular view of Brexit on them. Campaigning rapidly on Remain will put a lot of core Labour members and voters off. We are the party of the 99%, not just the 48%. We should support the position put forward by the NEC, vote against Composite 13, for Composite 14, let members each decide how to campaign, let the people decide how to vote on Brexit. Thank you, Conference. Gary Ostrolenk from Campbell and Peckham CLP. Comrades, we are on the brink of a historic victory. We are a party ready and committed to reverse not just the austerity of the last nine years, but 40 years of neoliberal attacks on working people and communities. Few of us could understand in 1985, and I was there, just what we were in for. 
and we cannot waste this opportunity. But we're not there yet. Of course, we have to win the general election, but that is not enough. All hell will break loose as the corporations and the super wealthy fight back. To withstand this onslaught, we will need the trust and support of a united working class. Yet so many of us seem intent on further polarising a split in the class. And over what? The terms of a trade deal? The Brexit is a detail compared to what is at stake for our party and our country today. <laughs> Democracy matters. Half of our class voted to leave the EU, and not because they were ignorant, and not because they were racist. <laughs> the referendum became a vote on austerity and neoliberalism. If we contemptuously turn our backs on that vote and commit now to remain, we will re render our party impotent and our project, our precious project, will fail. <laughs> Jeremy has focused on a simple message to voters. Our interests are the same whether we voted leave or remain. And we must hang on to that. The alternative is not business as usual. If we alienate Start half our class, up, if they don't feel we're listening to them, they will turn elsewhere. The fascists and the far right are on the streets, but increasingly they have voices in Parliament too. Comrades, I implore you, Delegate, vote for the NEC position and for Composite up, 14, and vote against Composite 13. Noah Tucker, Tottenham CLP. And I have to say, I'm from a, a, a constituency and a CLP which is overwhelmingly pro Remain. But I've got a message from the overwhelmingly Remainers of Tottenham Labour Party, which is back your leader. Support Jeremy. And you know what? Jeremy's got a track record. He was right on Iraq. He was right on gay rights. He was right on privatisation of P and PFI. He's been right again and again. And he is right on our tactics and strategy around Brexit. <laughs> Comrades, composite. 13 has to be rejected because it points in the direction of an utterly nightmare scenario. Follow me, comrades, because it's a bit com convoluted. We cannot possibly or credibly negotiate a reasonable Brexit deal. If we have already committed ourselves to opposing that deal, there is no motivation from the EU or our own negotiators to get anything but a very, very bad deal. And when we go to the voters and oppose our own deal, we cannot predict the outcome. Nobody thought Trump would be elected, and realistically, nobody thought in 2016 the voters would vote for Brexit. But what if they vote for Brexit again next year on a bad deal which we have negotiated and committed to oppose? We could repeat a nightmare scenario. It might may be a deal that is very, very little different from the one that Theresa May negotiated. Up, Comrades, don't allow, don't allow Farage and Boris Johnson to wear the clothes of the 52%. They have no clothes. They represent the 1%. It is our party that represents the 99%. Good afternoon, Conference. Sam Eccles, Hammersmith CLP, first time delegate, first time speaker. 
Conference, I stand here on the same values as many of you here, internationalist, compassionate, and want to be part of a society that celebrates our diversity and champions workers' rights. And conference looking ahead, looking to the future, if we are to stand up against superpowers that are using underhand cyber tactics to disrupt the very fabric of our society and our democracy, or if we are to build a multilateral Green New Deal, a revolutionary Green New Deal across Europe and beyond, and also in our own country, or if we are to build an economy that is strong enough not to be economically bullied by superpowers to the East and to the West, and if we are to build a cooperation and offer an economic cooperation across Europe, not just from ourselves, then we must back Composite 13. <laughs> Conference. Conference our members, and I know some people will disagree, but I ask them to look. Conference, our members are overwhelmingly in favour of Remain, with 90% of CLPs submitting a Remain motion to 2019 conference. As well as Welsh Labour, Scottish Labour and Northern Ireland Labour. And we talk a lot, we talk a lot about democracy this year. So let's demonstrate it. But our voters too, not just our members, want us to remain. And if we are to survive, and I choose my words very carefully, to survive as a party beyond the next election, and we are going to achieve all that has been discussed from this very podium in the last few days, we must take a position now Delegate, to put any you to wind up, please? to put any Brexit deal back to the public for a vote with the option to remain, and we must campaign for Remain. <laughs> Conference, I am wrapping up. Conference, I ask you not just for my own sake, not just for my children's sake, but for my children's children's sake, because this is what we are talking about. Delegate, can I ask you to wind up, please? I commend Motion 13 and for everyone in this room to back Composite 13. Uh, my name's Hannah, I'm 22, I'm from Leeds and I'm a first time speaker. I joined the Labour Party a year ago because I want Jeremy Corbyn's transformative policies uh, to put into action to help rebuild our country after almost a decade of brutal Tory austerity. Before joining the party, I was proud to see a Labour MP elected in my home constituency of Leeds North West for the first time in 12 years. Our manifesto was offering something truly revolutionary, and we were able to swing Leeds North West away from the Lib Dems by, to Labour by 14%. Almost every day I speak to young people on the doorstep and they tell me how much they want to stay in the EU and to fight to reform from within. Where they used to be filled with hope and excitement at the prospect of a Corbyn-led government, they're now confused and conflicted. Earlier this year, these young people didn't see any contradiction between supporting Jeremy Corbyn and voting Green. They felt we have similar policies but that the Greens were clear on one thing we weren't. They would campaign to stay in the EU. Without, without the support of these voters, my dream of seeing a transformative Labour government cannot happen. Today, we have the chance to put Jeremy Corbyn into number 10 by supporting Composite 13. To win back those voters, to win back those voters who support Jeremy Corbyn, we need a clear stance. It's not good enough to say we'll decide our policy on a later date, because I know young people will withhold their vote against us unless we'll tell them we'll campaign to remain. Welsh Labour, Scottish Labour and Northern Irish Labour have all dedicated themselves to campaigning to remain in a referendum. So where's the divide? How is, how is Composite 13 a divide? 
My personal experience of voters refusing to support Labour without a confirmed Remain position is reflected in all of the po polling and in the results of the local Delegate, and European Parliament elections we saw earlier up, this year. Please. To get Jeremy Corbyn into number 10, vote for Composite 13. Okay, before, we, before you come up, we'll take um, another round of speakers. Again, I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'll do the same, and I'll try and see, and I'm looking particularly... Um, young man with the top. Someone with the blue order of business paper there. Yep, yep, you. Okay. Some yellow papers over there. Woman in the red t shirt there. Yep. Guy in the red shirt, yep, yeah, and I'll come back I'll come back round. Good afternoon, conference, Mr. Ives. Irithan Thames Mead, CLP. As a lever, I went to a remain fringe meeting done by S-E-R-A, and Mr Ben was there too. Now, apart from the usual dissent about leave, a lot of good stuff was said in that meeting that crosses a divide between leave and remain. I value the opinions of honest leavers and honest remainers to come together and make a, a policy on the bad side of leave, we know who that is, that's Mr Johnson and Nige. They're bad news. They're, they operate from big money. But at the other end, the nasty side of Remain, there is the neoliberals. And if you look at them who instigated this campaign of Remain, I'm not slagging that off, but they are the ones that walk, how many of them didn't walk out on Jeremy a few years ago. How many of them didn't do it? And how many of those same people have constantly tried to stab him in the back? All the time. So, again, those people, I put them in the same bin as Boris and Nigel, because I say that they, all that lot, would have no compound would not stop at selling our National Health Service bit by bit, contract by contract. They all do the same. Neoliberals and the Tories, that's what they would do. Now, I'm concerned that if we push um, Remain too hard, that it will push the people who are sick of all this palaver into the hands of Boris and Nigel. I don't want that to happen, but I say, that you honest people of leavers and remainers can work a policy out. I don't really want to commit myself to pushing 13 so and 14. Up, okay, but I'm um, okay with Jeremy's little deal there. It's the best we can do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair, Conference, Jane Gebby, Bridgen, CLP. I have been mandated by my CLP to support Motion 13. The reality for us is that in Wales, we need to campaign for a Remain vote. And you know what? 
I fully support anybody in here to have your own opinion. We all do. But we need to make that determination in the ballot box for everybody to make a consensus opinion. And one of the reasons that I think we need to do that is because I'm just reading the London Economic and I'm reading about the Euromyths that we've all been listening to for many, many years about the European Union. And do you know what? It's disturbing. Do you know that we've listened to people say that curved bananas are no longer acceptable in our shops? Do you know how many times people have repeated that bits of information to me? It's rubbish. There is no rule about it. So I'm reading some more. Abattoirs. Acres of land, all sorts of rubbish coming out of the EU in the press that supports a Tory government that has fed us misinformation about the EU referendum and all the way through it. We need to campaign for a Remain vote for our people because that is the best option for the UK as a whole. Thank you, Conference. Hello, delegates. Joe Twigg, Chipping Barnett, Labour Party. First time conference, first time delegate. And I didn't make any notes, so I might get into trouble now. Um, what I want to say is I went on the Brexit march, and it was quite amazing, really. It was a million people out there marching in the sunshine. But let me tell you, on a good day, there are maybe 200 people at the Grenfell march. And I think maybe we need to get our priorities right here. In our own lifetime, in our time, we have a moral outrage here in this country. And really, in a way, we're kind of culpable because it's happening now in our lifetime. And I think we need to go out there and tell people exactly where we stand, be very clear, but not about simplistic messages about bollocks to Brexit or take back control or Brexit means Brexit, but maybe something about what is of value to us. I want to give, I, I think I can give a simplistic message too, maybe not as simplistic as the papers might like because it's more than three words. It's six words. It's a, a plague on both your houses for all those charlatans that have divided our country into two tribes, two warring tribes. And you want, sometimes, when you have to lead a path through two warring tribes, there is some crossfire. But we stand strong. We have courage. For a long time now, our leadership has shown that courage. All the while, they've been blamed for being weak, for being useless, and for not having courage at all. Actually, they've shown that they have courage. And we need to have courage and strengthen, with every ounce that we have, we strengthen our leadership Delegate, that is fighting for us. Delegate, can I ask you to us. wind up, please? So you vote for the NEC motion. And <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take um, three more speakers. Um, the woman in the back in the burgundy dress. The burgundy is, I'm not sure whether it's a dress or top. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The guy there in the red t shirt with the. Yeah. And the person at the back there, I don't know whether it's black or burgundy, the woman. There. Then we'll put no, no, there. Um, uh, if we're very quick, we'll have another round. Come on. This bit. Uh, 
Hi, Eloise Harris, Bethel Green and Bow CLP. Um, I want to thank the Chair for uh, chairing this debate so far, but I think it poses an issue of accessibility that comrades are standing up and waving things around, and I think this is against the rules. So um, thank you so far, but I really think this needs to be addressed for the uh, there, comrades there, who need this. They're only standing up because I've asked them to. Um, they're not waving the usual parrots and ducks and all the rest of it because that stopped and crocodiles and umbrellas. Okay. But I'll take your point about accessibility. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the speaker from the last round. Yep. Can, uh, yeah, thank you, conference. My name is Omar Ahmed, uh, uh, first time speaker. That's my first time delegate. So my brothers and sisters, uh, some, uh, some of my friends are my respected elders. Uh, as, as it is safe to say that we live in ext extremely dangerous times with the presidency of Donald Trump, his policies, uh, so on the rise of the far right, uh, so on, uh, so on the appalling loss of human life uh, it was due to disastrous global interventions. Uh, it is up to us, the true Labour Party, to be the voice of the voiceless uh, uh, so on the party of peace, justice and human rights. Well, as my friends, as we will never return to the years of Tony Blair uh, as and his disgraceful decision uh, yet to take his country uh, into the illegal war of Iraq. Uh, so I want to speak very briefly but specifically on the issue of Kashmir, where under, where under a right-wing Indian administration uh, yeah, there is a genocide being inflicted on the people of Kashmir, you know, as, as we are speaking, you know, with the rape of women, the abduction of children, uh, so on the slaughter uh, as our protesting innocent men, and the imprisonment, uh, and the imprisonment as our politicians. As my friends, we, the British people, as our Labour Party members and supporters, can we must remind uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, as on the Indian administration, this is deplorable and utterly uh, not acceptable. And we will fight against this injustice with every breath in our bodies. Uh, so likewise, Mr. Smith is imperative to speak up for the rights and the returns uh, uh, of the Palestinians to, uh, to their land. And we, the Labour Party, stand shoulder to shoulder uh, with the people of Palestine uh, 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 against the tyrannical oppressors. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I ask you to redouble your efforts in building solidarity uh, as with the people uh, of Palestine. Uh, there must be a political solution to the war in Syria, which has taken the lives of hundreds of thousands of innocent human beings. Uh, so we must challenge NATO as when all other existing military was alliances, which have been a recipe for disaster, as man have made this world a more insecure place, as and we must, we must, must work towards total nuclear, nuclear disarmament. Delegate, can I ask you to wind up? Thank you. Uh, Delegate, as I'm my really appeal to you sorry. directly, uh, it was please support Jeremy Corbyn, the man who has worked you tirelessly really need for to peace wind up and against now, war Delegate. and against racism, including uh, including its anti-Semitism uh, conference. Thank you. My name is Vanessa Stilwell from Dulwich and West Norwood constituency and I want to speak in support of our Palestinian brothers and sisters. There are far too few in this party. I'm a member of Jewish Voice for Labour, one of thousands of Jews. One of thousands of Jews in this party who have never experienced and any anti-Semitism and who support Jeremy Corbyn as the most anti-racist leader this party has ever had. Hospital, King's College Hospital, is the major trauma centre for the whole of the South East region. 
Victoria Rose, one of their consultants, recently returned from Gaza, where she was working with medical aid for Palestinian, Palestines, Palestinians on a land reconstruction surgical mission. And this is what she reported. Since the widespread Great March of Return protest began in Gaza 17 months ago, more than 7,300 Palestinians have received gunshot wounds, mostly to their lower limbs. Last week, um, oh, sorry, I've got the, oh. It's on the next page. Oh. Uh, oh dear, sorry, I've got, what's the page? What I remember of the page that I can't find now is that 33,000 people have been injured by gunshot wounds, tear gas. One baby even died being, having tear Delegate, gas worked I know it. You, I know you couldn't find your page, but I am yeah. going to ask you to wind yeah. up if possible. I have to be fair to everyone. Well, about half the population in Gaza is very young. So many children. People don't live long. And apart from stopping, a, a, a lot of the arms were supplied by Britain, and we have to stop that. We've re has, but, but more than that, we have to recognize, we have to keep Palestine on the agenda, not stop talking about it. West Norwood CLP. Conference Brexit is a nationalist project, but we are an internationalist party. That means we know that there is no national solution to the international climate emergency, the refugee crisis, imperialist war and exploitation. There is no exclusively British road to socialism. The vote for Brexit, led by Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, is a sign of decay in a system incapable of delivering continued social progress, an aftershock of the brutal austerity imposed after the last economic crisis. The result has been a rise in racism, nationalism and far-right forces, not just in Britain or Europe, but across the world. Brexit is a false answer to falling wages and decimated communities. It's not the concept of European integration we should blame. It's the policies of successive governments who destroyed our industry, bailed out the banks and made workers pay the price. And make no mistake, it will be workers who pay the price for a boss's Brexit. That's why the vast majority of our member support remain. And if we go into an election with a position that is not in line with the vast majority of the members, we will lose that election and that will be the end of the Corbyn project. But we need Corbyn at the front of a cross-border movement of workers and the oppressed which can offer a genuine solution to the common problems faced by workers in every country. To start building an international resistance, we must first defend freedom of movement and the existing political, economic and social integration of Europe's working class. That means defeating the nationalist Brexit project. We campaign for Labour to oppose all forms of Brexit, not out of faith that the EU institutions can be transformed into something progressive. We have to fight to replace the imperialist EU, not just through social reforms, but through a social revolution in our democracy, our economy and in our climate. Not to dismiss the anger of those who voted Leave, but to offer them the politics that can truly deliver them a better society. The alternative to a bankrupt international capitalism is not socialism in one country, but international socialism. I ask you to start winding up, please. Against the capitalist UK and capitalist EU, we must fight for a socialist Britain in a socialist United States of Europe. Conference, please support Composite for 13, vote down the other options and make Labour a socialist, internationalist, anti-Brexit party.
Conference, Sammy Liverpool Walton CLP, proud to rise in support of Composite 14. The, mo the motion we proposed at the start of the day of the afternoon so energetically. A motion to unite the 99% of people who desperately need a Labour government behind the man who can deliver it, Jeremy Corbyn. It, it aggrieves me greatly to disagree so publicly with comrades whose commitment to democratic socialism I hold in no doubt whatsoever. However, I feel compelled to request we take this more moderate and united position on such a deeply divisive issue. In Liverpool, Walton, we agree with Len McCluskey. We are not Remainers. We are not Leavers. We are Socialists. We understand that the distinction is an arbitrary one constructed by those who benefit from the disunity of people in our powerful movement. Well, conference, we don't care what the millionaires and the media barons say. They are terrified of Jeremy Corbyn, and rightly so. Those who voted leave and those who voted remain have intersecting struggles, hopes and dreams and voting today to unequivocally back a Remain position abdicates our duty to respect the voices of everyone, no matter how they voted. It would be, in my view, unbecoming of our Democratic Socialist Party. And when I say party, I don't mean a room full of nodding dogs like all the other parties. I mean an exciting, passionate, enthusiastic and, yes, sometimes messy, people-powered mass movement filled with diverse voices, all equally deserving of respect. Boris Johnson, our divider-in-chief, We'll be praying Labour finishes Can the I day as a up, Remain please? party. Thank you. Let's not give him what he wants. We all back Jeremy Corbyn to fix our NHS, fix our schools, deliver social justice. Let's back him on Brexit today. I request we vote no on Composite 13 and an emphatic yes on Composite 14. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we probably turned someone away that I'd picked the last time, and that's the person in the greeny T-shirt with a jacket on. Um, and um, delegate here, and then someone else right at the right at the back in the black. We will have time for another three after this. Um, so if you just bear with me, we'll do that again. Can we um, just settle down so the delegate can address conference? Thank you. Okay. Right. Nadine Granderson Mills, BAME Labour. Conference, a no deal Brexit will cause chaos and carnage in our BAME communities. The enemy and the antithesis of cohesion, the contentious Brexit debate, has created, created a surge in hate crimes spurred on by inflammatory anti-immigration and racist rhetoric. This heightened hate is not the only problem we have to contend with. BAME people already suffer high levels of unemployment, disproportionate disadvantage and discrimination. We are more likely to be in poorly paid, precarious jobs with little savings and disposable income. Conference, a no deal Brexit will certainly compound these inequalities. We have every right to feel afraid and anxious about rising food prices, about our manual workers being especially vulnerable to job cuts, about future employee rights, guaranteed work hours and safety regulations, about restrictions on freedom of movement and its impact on BAME and EU workers. 
So, to Boris Johnson, BAME Labour says, you have no mandate to pursue a no-deal Brexit. Say no to WTO. Say no to FTAs. Stop this car crash and call a referendum. Retain access to justice in the ECJ. Keep the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights and European Social Charter. Preserve our public services. The protection of the national interest is paramount. Abandon this kamikaze approach. Conference. Support the BAME Labour campaign. Make BAME voices heard. Sign our letter to Boris Johnson. There are no benefits for BAME communities from Brexit. Stop this shambles. Oppose a no deal. Put it to the people now. Campaign for a Labour government. Promote Jeremy Corbyn to Prime Minister. Thank you. Comrades and Chair, uh, Tony Burke of Unite, speaking in support of the Composite on Palestine, speaking in support of the Palestinian people, and highlighting the escalating attacks taking place now against Palestinian communities. Today we call upon our trade union and labour movement to return to its greatest tradition, a tradition of solidarity with those that need our help. From the ranks of our movement, comrades, trade unionists have fought and died in the battle against fascism in Spain, campaigned for the end of British colonial rule around the world, and played a crucial role in bringing down the evils of apartheid in South Africa. And this motion calls for solidarity at this critical moment. The Palestinians are occupied and besieged, and they're facing further attacks. Now, in the trade union movement and the labour movement, we've got a strong history of support for Palestinian human rights. We're affiliated to the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign and Labour and Palestine. And we need to remain strong because we're now confronted by Trump and, as some people have said, his so-called deal of the century which is designed to stop fundamental, uh, vital funding uh, of the human, uh, humanitarian agency for Pal Palestinian refugees, increasing the siege of Gaza and rapidly expanding yet more illegal settlements. We need an ethical and internationalist foreign policy. Comrades, the trade union movement has always said, an injury to one is an injury to all. So we stand amongst the, alongside the Palestinian people, people facing the massive forces arrayed against them, with dignity, fortitude and courage. They will not struggle alone. Support the Composite. Good afternoon, conference. I know that I have spoken yesterday, but please bear with me. However, I have realized that none of the BAME uh, comrades have been picked up to speak on Brexit. And I represent a popular and Limehouse CLP. My name is Asra Anjum, and a CLP which has majority of BAME population, and we have voted to remain. Therefore, my chair has requested to come and request here to be given an opportunity to speak as a BAME candidate. And I am I'm speaking in support of Composite 13. Conference, vast majority of our supporters and voters oppose Brexit. We cannot go into a general election without a clear Brexit policy. Brexit does not end if we leave EU. It means years of negotiations and neoliberal trade deals. Brexit is an absolute right-wing nationalist exploitation of global economic, social and humanitarian crisis. There will be an immense change in the way that we relate to each other and the world around us. Brexit will have an impact on all age groups in our society, but in particular on the young people who are currently in education or beginning their journey in the world of employment. We need to change the political landscape of Britain in a way that will deliver results for both UK and Europe 
exiting Europe will be the greatest challenge UK has faced since World War II. We need a revolution conference in the best interest of people of both sides, EU as well as UK, and our future generation revolution, similar to the one led by Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Nelson Mandela alike. So we need to see Jeremy Corbyn at number 10 to promote our Brexit policy. We want to stop Brexit and transform Britain and Europe. So stay united. Thank you. I'll take the points of order. Can you just? Um, but you need to come down to the rostrum to make them, please. Hello, conference. Hello, conference. Just a uh, quick point of order. Sitting down on the east side, I'm looking at the map here, and I can't see. Um, any of us getting chosen, I'm sure there's plenty of groups around the area here that aren't getting chosen. I'm sure, I'm, I don't know, I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm sure you've got a very difficult job, I'm sure, yeah? Because you've got lots of people standing up, it's very hard to see over there. I'm just saying, for future reference, please have a little look over there, because there's tons of us putting our hands up and we're not getting picked. OK, next speaker, thank you. Hello conference, Alex Fernandez, youth delegate from Tooting CLP, first time delegate and first time speaker. I stand before you as an internationalist socialist and a Portuguese migrant. The majority of my constituency of Tooting are first and second generation migrants and I am proud to stand here and give them a voice. We are seeing a rise in far right attacks on our streets and in our schools. We are seeing a rise of right-wing nationalist anti-migrant tendencies across Europe, from Viktor Orban's Hungary to Salvini's Italy to the neoliberal European Renaissance pushed by Emmanuel Macron. Conference, I put it to you that our response to this should not be to close the door behind us and leave them to it, but to use the weight of this Labour Party, led by Jeremy Corbyn, the largest political party in Europe, and campaign for our socialist vision within the EU. We will not let... We will not let the Liberal Democrats, who have just welcomed a poisonous Tory homophobe into their party, claim to be that voice against the right. Conference, we must campaign to remain in the EU and transform it from within. And a united party policy is the same policy in Wales, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland and in England. We cannot have socialism without international solidarity. Many of the delegates on this floor are rightly opposed to the EU's brutal treatment of migrants and refugees. Leaving the EU will not help those migrants. We must dismantle Fortress Europe from within. I urge Conference to support Composite 13 so we have a socialist Labour Party committed to remaining in the EU. I want to see Jeremy Corbyn in number 10, a socialist Labour Party in government and campaigning to remain is the way to do it and the only way to do it. Solidarity. Of order, I think. A one. Slade CLP. Um, Chair, I appreciate you have an extremely difficult job. It's a very heated debate. But it feels both, the selection of speakers feels both too random and not random enough. In terms of being random, not random enough, can I suggest that it should be a block? You know which blocks are where. Say the H block is asked to put up their hands, then F, then E, and each block gets a turn to have one person selected. <laughs> Secondly, can I say that it, with the system right now, there are... There Delegate, are... can I just... It isn't, it isn't a point of order. 
I think yeah. we've heard what you've got to say. Got I think we've known, no, no, I think we've known for a number of years that we need to do something different. I'm more than happy for you to send those comments in so that we can try and deal with that through CAC. Yeah. Okay. But can Thank I, you. Can I make well, a I think point? If, I think if we keep continue, I won't be able to take any further speakers. So the seconds. decisions. Why are we not being asked to speak on specific motions or composites? Because actually we're not getting a balanced debate because too many people from one debate are accidentally being asked. Why is this not happening? The, the timetable is a matter for the CAC. If I tell you, if I dare, I have absolute sympathy with what you're saying. We do need to do this differently. We're coming to the end of this debate. We can't do it today, but I will make a commitment to you and others that we will try and do this differently at the next party conference, because it can't go on like this. Next point of order. Salma Ahmed from Harrington, North Essex. I spoke yesterday, and I was told I could, could not speak today. I've been waiting, because I'm passionate about Brexit, just like you are. But somebody spoke yesterday, and they were allowed again. And that is not right. We need some consistency. And if you talk about Brexit, all I will say, support motion 14, if you want Jeremy Corbyn no, no, no. in that house. Support him. He needs our support. Don't make a laughing stock of the Labour Party. We don't need that. We need to be united. Thank you. Delegate, that, that wasn't a point of order. Um, can I just say to you that delegates are allowed to move reference back and make contributions in the motions. So that might be why you've seen two people speaking. Um, it is supposed to be flagged um, with that. So if that happened, it's been an error. But people can speak twice with references back and into motions. So. Um, Sorry, the next speaker. Hello, delegates, dear comrades. Um, I proposed my own motion. I'm the only delegate from my CLP, therefore I was the only person able to do that. But we also were involved in the Brexit composite and submitted the Brexit motion as our non-emergency motion. And as I'm the only delegate from my CLP, I'm again the only person that can represent um, my CLP and my group's views on that. So that is my reference. Thanks for the solidarity team. Um, Comrades, siblings, brothers and sisters, I am a proud socialist. I'm a proud member of Unite. I proudly campaigned. Hey. Um, I proudly campaigned to get Jeremy Corbyn to be Labour leader the first time. I voted for him the second time, and if there was a vote tomorrow, I would vote for him again. And that is why we need him in government. We need him in government because of the austerity that is killing people, because of the hostile environment, and because of the whole range of issues that this incredible radical conference has dealt with today but conference we are not going to get Jeremy Corbyn into number 10 if we continue to have this fudged Brexit policy I hear <laughs> conference I was one of you if I'm honest when I came to conference three days ago I did not believe in a second referendum I did not believe in a confirmatory vote I do not like the EU if I'm honest I, I'm with the seven out of ten four out of ten maybe like a one and a half I see that it's been used for neoliberal ideals but at the same time we have the strongest block of socialists that we have ever had in the EU and we are hemorrhaging votes in key seats in Barnet where I am um, a diversity officer we hemorrhaged votes we went from having a Lib Dem party who nearly lost their 
uh, deposit in 2017 to them taking the highest proportion in 2018 with 28.5% of the votes. That is unacceptable. And if we are going to get Jeremy Corbyn and this radical policy into number 10, we need a definitive motion. Conference. I ask you to wind up, it please. A majority motion. It is not a uh, solidarity motion if we are only Can speaking in the world wind up please oh, well. if we you. are only speaking in england and how are we going to help the migrants in the sea if we leave them in the hands of the neoliberals thank you thank you conference can i ask everybody to sit down i'm going to be in the bad books yet again um, we haven't got any time to take any further speakers i know that will disappoint everyone we do can still feed into the policy seminars. We've got policy motions tomorrow. We have had two and a quarter hours of um, delegates making contributions. I'm not sure how many we've had, but we've had lots of people. We've tried to cover the diverse nature of our party. So conference, I'm really sorry we can't take any more speakers. And I'm not, well, I'm not, I've made the decision, we have to move on, we have to deal with the next speakers. We've made a commitment to look at what we do next time, I can't really do anything else today. So conference, um, thank you. Can I now call on our Shadow Brexit Secretary Keir Starmer to address conference. Thank you. Thank you, conference. And can I start with a thank you, a huge thank you to all of you, all of our delegates, our members, our trade unions, and the whole Labour movement for supporting me and my team this year and the decisions we had to make. Thank you for that. And can I thank my team who have worked hard again this year in the House of Lords and the House of Commons, winning those votes on behalf of Labour. Thank you, members of my team. <laughs> conference, what a year it has been. In last year's conference motion, remember that? You gave us a roadmap. You asked us to vote down Theresa May's flawed deal and we did, three times, with a historic victory. You asked us to do everything we could to prevent no deal, and we did. And you asked us to keep a public vote on the table, and we did. But conference, we now face a very different set of challenges to last year. Boris Johnson and the most right-wing government in recent history, a Prime Minister with no moral compass, no principles, no regard for the truth. John Major is taking him to court. <laughs> and, and David Cameron, of all people, calls himself serving. I don't believe a word Johnson says, and neither should you. What did he tell us? What did he tell us? He told us that Brexit would be good for the NHS. It won't. He told us that shutting down Parliament had nothing to do with Brexit. It's got everything to do with Brexit. He told us he could unite the country. Nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is this, isn't it? He has never put anyone's interests above his own, and he never will. With Dominic Cummings pulling his strings, he threatens us with a no-deal Brexit. He threatens us with a no-deal Brexit. Well, no deal may not be a problem 
for Boris Johnson, for Jacob Rees-Mogg and Dominic Raab, but it would be a disaster for working people across this country. <laughs> Conference, this is not a game that we're playing. A no-deal Brexit will see manufacturing torn apart after the revival, the service sector decimated, chaos and delay at our borders, vital food and medicines will not get through. EU citizens will be left in limbo. And the Good Friday Agreement could be imperiled. The open border in Northern Ireland is not a technical question about how you get people or goods across a line in the road. It's the manifestation of peace. We will never accept Boris Johnson's reckless approach, never. And that's why we were right over the summer to work on a cross-party basis with Jeremy Corbyn bringing together the opposition party leaders to take over Parliament three weeks ago and pass a law to prevent a no-deal Brexit on the 31st of October. We used to call Theresa May's government the zombie government, but at least she occasionally won a vote. So far with this Prime Minister, it's Johnson nil, Corbyn six. <laughs> and doesn't it tell you everything you need to know about Boris Johnson that we had to pass a law to prevent him crashing us out the EU without a deal, and that his first instinct is to try and break that law. His first instinct is to try and break that law. No one is above the law. And, and Prime Minister, if you think we're going to sit idly by whilst you break the law, you've got another thing coming. Mark my words. Whenever we return to Parliament, and the sooner the better, we will be ready. A conference, despite all that, let's be honest with each other. Preventing no deal is vital, but it isn't an end in itself. It's an insurance policy. It won't break the deadlock, and the country desperately wants to move on. And we have to find a way forward. We're under a duty to find a way forward. And there's now only one way. Whether in this government or the next, put it to the people. Conference, too much has happened in the last three years for this now to be decided without the consent of the public. We need to ask them a basic and vital question. Are you prepared to leave with the best deal that can be secured, or wouldn't you rather remain in the EU? People must have that final say. A referendum in which Remain should and will be on the ballot paper <laughs> along with the best leave deal that can be secured. <laughs> and conference, we owe it to those who want to leave to secure that best leave deal and offer it as an option.
But if Remain wins, we will remain a member of the EU, a full member of the EU. Conference. Last year I stood before you and said nobody was ruling out the option of Remain. We've come a long way. An election is coming. We've got a Prime Minister with no mandate, no plan and no majority. We've beaten the Tories in Parliament and as and when necessary we'll beat them again in Parliament. I'm determined about that. But soon, soon we're going to have to beat them at the ballot box. It's a stark choice. If we lose, we risk another wasted decade, a no-deal Brexit, a hard right agenda, stripping away rights and protections and selling off public services. But if we win, if we win, Labour can pull this country back from the brink. <laughs> Labour can end austerity, rebuild our public services, invest in our communities. The stakes could hardly be higher. And so I can tell you today, an incoming Labour government will legislate for a referendum immediately on taking power and hold that referendum within six months. That is our commitment. Can I have a simple message? If you want a referendum, vote Labour. If you want a final say on Brexit, Vote Labour. If you want to fight for Remain, vote Labour. Conference, you know where I stand on the question of Remain. I've said many times that I will campaign for Remain. But let me be very clear, I respect all of those who argue the other way. And conference, let us go into this crucial period of our history with our eyes open. We campaigned in 2016 for Remain because of our values. Because of our values. We are internationalists. We stand in solidarity with our friends and neighbours in Europe. We profoundly believe in peace, in reconciliation, in human rights and collaboration across borders. And we will never put peace in Northern Ireland in jeopardy. Conference, those are our values, socialist values, then and now, and let them guide us through this next period of history. But conference, we didn't just campaign to remain. We campaigned to remain and reform. <laughs> remain and reform. And the Labour Party, the Labour Party cannot and should not just defend the status quo in Europe or at home. We have to make the case for radical reform. We're the largest socialist party in Europe. It's our duty to lead. Let us bring our sister parties together across Europe and host an international conference. 
to forge our shared plan for a social Europe, with the UK at the heart, not sitting on the sidelines, leading, <laughs> leading, not pleading. But conference, we also need to recognise that Brexit is deeper and bigger than the simple question of our relationship with the EU, and we will never get past Brexit if we don't understand why, in 2016, millions of people said they wanted change. They didn't just speak, they shouted. They told us that the political and economic system was not working. And they were right about that. The status quo is bust. We see inequality and injustice everywhere. We desperately need a fundamental shift in power, in wealth, and in opportunity. That is why our 2017 manifesto was so popular. And we must build on it. Only Labour can end child poverty. <laughs> Only Labour can confront the moral disgrace of homelessness. <laughs> Only Labour can transform our economy, end insecure work, raise wages and create good jobs across the country. Only Labour will invest and rebuild our NHS and public services. And only a Labour government will tackle the climate emergency so that we can look the next generation in the eye and say, we did not let you down. The conference the Tories have failed. They have wrecked our economy. They've wrecked our public services. They've wrecked our welfare state. And now they're wrecking our international reputation. Their time is up. We have to beat them. And we will. We have to defeat Johnson, and we will. We have to defeat his politics and show that decency can triumph. We have to deliver a radical Labour government and give people the final say on whether to remain in the EU. Let's get on with it. Thank you, Conference. Thank you, Conference. Thank you, um, Kia. Conference, we will now um, take the votes. <laughs> Let, let's, I'm just going to explain how we're going to do this. We will take these votes, at least initially, as a show of hands. Sorry? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's not in. Won't be in.
through the digital. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry about that, um, delegates. So initially, we will take this on a show of hands. Um, if it's unclear or close, then we will move to a card vote. Oh. Well, come down then. My point, sorry. Can we, can we settle down and take this point of order, please? Okay, my point of order is that there is a huge extra number of people in the hall who have been allowed in for that last speech. So they're lining all the way around and all the way around the back. And they've come in and they've made themselves available in the seats that have been free. How do we know the people that are putting their hands up are actually the delegates and those who are mandated to vote when we've got a hall full of people who should not actually be in here? Can we clear the hall, the floor, so it goes back to delegates and those people are asked to leave? Telling who they are. I'm not, I'm not going to do a card vote on the point of order. What I am going to say is all of those people that have come in for Keir's speech and you're not delegates, could I ask you now to leave the room? Thank you. <laughs> OK. And... If you are delegates and you are standing up around the side, can you please return to your seats? Thank you. Right, OK, let's move on. There may be some people that are still stood, but they are staff. Um, but I will ignore anybody put, that puts the hand up at the side or the back. I'm only going to look at the people that are seated. OK, so um, the first vote um, is on the any... OK, just before we go to the... But we will get there eventually. If you recall from Yasmin's um, contribution this morning, if the statement is carried, it doesn't mean to say that we will not continue to vote on Composite 13 and 14. Oh. No, I'm, I'm, moving, I'm moving to the vote. It's been explained, I am moving to the vote. So can I see all those in favour? for the NEC statement on Brexit. OK, thank you. Because, and can I see all those against? OK, that is clearly carried. Delegates, we do have a number of other votes to take. 
And the next one is your favourite ones on the reference back. And <laughs> the first one that you that you was referenced back was the in, on the International Policy Commission annual report um, on, from Brighton, Kemp Town. Can I see all those in favour of that reference back? Okay, thank you. And all those against reference back. That's carried. That's clearly carried. I have two further, further reference back that was moved from the floor. Um, and the first one was from Tottenham CLP, which was page 124, paragraph 2. Can I see all those in favour of the reference back? Okay, thank you. Anyone against? That's clearly carried. Third one is uh, from Liverpool Wavertree, which again was on page 124 on Kashmir. Can I see all those in favour of the reference back? Thank you. And anyone against? That is clearly carried. OK, uh, moving then on to Combosite 11 on Yemen. Can I see all those in favour of Comp 11? Thank you. And anyone against? That's carried unanimously. <laughs> Moving on to Composite 12, Ethical Foreign Policy. Can I see all those in favour? Thank you. And anyone against? Almost unanimous, but clearly carried. <laughs> now moving on to Composite 13, uh, Brexit. Can I see all those in favour of Composite 13? Thank you, and all those against. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was one way, and Jenny said something else, so. It is lost, yeah. Yes, that, that was lost. Can we sit down? I, I know that's a difficult. Sorry. Okay. okay. Just, can I? Can I just look? Whichever way I go with this, I'm going to be in trouble with some people. It, it, in my view, it was carried. It was in my view, it was carried. Just. Sorry, sorry. Listen, I'm getting it, but it was lost. Sorry, sorry. And whilst I accept we had a number of card votes yesterday, it was closer than um, what this was. It's a very difficult. It isn't. It, it. We have nothing in our standing orders or constitution, which some organisations have, 
where if there's a number of people calling for it, we can do that. So it's the, decision, the decision has to be, as I called it, um, that it was lost, and that's very difficult. And look, I, I, under, I understand the difficulties. We've had a really good debate. We've, we've respected each other's points of view, and at the point where, you know, I can't, if, if it wasn't clear, I'd have asked for a card vote. Conference, this is one of the most important decisions that the Labour Party will take this decade, and I think we deserve a card vote here. We, we, have, already, we, have, already heard, we have already heard from delegates. We have already heard from delegates that the unions uh, actually are quite split on this. Unison are in favour of Composite 13. Uh, unite were against. I think it's impossible to tell from the floor, given, uh, g given the, the number of delegate. card votes we had yesterday. We deserve a card vote here delegate. today. Democracy in action. No, 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 no. Let's. Delegates, 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 no. Absolutely, please sit down. And to the last person, you can see my lanyard. I'm a member of Unison, a, a former president, and they will ex expect me to do what's right. And if it was carried, I would have said that, had it, and it was lost, and they will accept that as well. That's what our democracy does. And that was lost. I want us to leave and I want us to be right with each other because the most important thing for any of us is a Labour government to deal with all the issues that we've talked about this week. So I'm now moving on to Composite 14. No, I, I'm not going back to that. We've had the discussion. I know you'll be upset. No, I'm moving on to Composite 14. Brexit. Can I see all those in favour? No, I'm not going to be bullied and shouted at and all the rest of it. The decision's being made. Composite, no, I'm not taking the point of order on the same point. I moved on to Composite 14. Can I see all those in favour of Comp 14? Thank you. And all those against? OK, that is carried. Okay, the next vote will be on emergency, the emergency motion. Human rights for the Uyghurs. We I won't get that right again. <laughs> Can I see all those in favour of the emergency motion? Thank you. And anyone against? That is overwhelmingly carried. And next we have the MPF report on the International Policy Commission. Can I see all those in favour? Thank you. That is clearly carried. Conference, just before we adjourn, um, I want to just make a comment um, about the Thomas Cook um, crisis. 22,000 jobs worldwide will be lost. 9,000 in this country. 250 million the RBS would have cost to save them. 600 million pounds of taxpayers' money to bring our people home. Shame on you, RBS.
Thomas Cook, a company born in the UK, let down by the RBS and this Tory government. 9,000 workers let down yet again by these Tories. Let's give our support to those workers and their union, the TSSA. And if you could just indulge me one more time, because this is the last. Um, I have a nephew who was jumping up and down last uh, the other day at the telly on on Saturday. So there you go. I'm waving back to you now. <laughs> so conference, we will now adjourn <coughs> until 8:30 tomorrow morning, when there are the seminars. Our next plenary, plenary session is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you, delegates. Thank you, conference. Well done, Wendy.